how's it going, everybody? Uh, hopefully you can hear us. That's what we're aiming for. We are aiming to be both seen and heard tonight. So sound off in chat if you can both see us and hear us. Uh, we'll wait. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll just stare lovingly into the camera. The best way to let us know is by just tons of donations immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or just start tapping your computer monitor loud enough for us to hear it. Yep, we can hear that. We can. We can, yeah. It's, it's weird. very disconcerting. So we'll be listening for that uh, your, yeah, your trademark screen. fishbowl sound. Mm -hmm. But welcome, guys. It is Friday night, and that means you are here on Saving Throw watching Wild Cards, which is our Savage Worlds Deadlands Reloaded game. Uh, I am your marshal tonight. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman. I will be running this here hoot and nanny. And uh, thank you for being with us. Let's go around the table and meet all of our all of our lovely peeps. So uh, let's see. I didn't prepare a special question for you guys yeah. tonight, but I'm going to come up with one. Do it right oh. now. I was going to say awesome. second week in a row without a special question. Yeah, I know. So this is not going to be a good one. Let's start with our with our our prodigal son who has returned uh, to Coke's Bogue down at the end of the table. So to Coke's Bogue. please introduce yourself. Introduce your character, and if your character was a pastry. What kind of wow. pastry would your character this is be? An excellent question. Um, so this is not going to be an awesome answer because you didn't take time to create an awesome question. But anyway, <laughs> uh, my name's Dom Zook. I play the gunslinger James Bogue, uh, who is returning from a ranging mission. Uh, if he were a pastry, uh, he would probably be a uh, just a glazed donut. Huh. Just a glazed donut. Yeah. Cake or fried? Uh, cake. A glazed cake donut. Yep. Old-fashioned, steady, yep. reliable. All right. You're going to like it. <laughs> it's going to go down smooth. Yep. I guarantee Whoa. you. I like it. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, right, to, uh, right to glazed cake donuts left we have. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Gabriel Pryor. And uh, if Gabriel Pryor was a... Uh, was a pastry, <laughs> he would be... That's the question. Yeah, that is the Danish. Question. Because at first you bite it and you're like, oh, this is just a plainish bread-based kind of thing. And you get in the middle and you're like, whoa, look at that flavor. There's jam in this. Oh, so I was going to ask, not a cream cheese Danish thing. Nope. What nope. flavor What flavor? It Danish? would be a raspberry jam Danish. That's, so at first you think it's plainish, but turns out it's a Danish. That's not, Gabriel not Pryor. It's Danish. That's, that's what I say every day. <laughs> wow. Everyone says that. We all know the Danish slogan. Um, <laughs> right next to uh, Gabriel Pryor, the Raspberry Danish, we have... Uh, hi, I am Megan Caves, and I play Rosaline Byrne. And, uh, well, I kind of was going to go the same direction you did, yes. so you kind of ruined it. <laughs> Stole the Danish. <laughs> but you know what? I, I think it's a croissant. She's a croissant. Mm. Um, mm. But she's yeah. a croissant with filling, a very delicious filling. It's probably cream cheese. But you know how croissants, like, they're really good and they're soft, but sometimes they're kind of spiky because it's that particular kind. Flaky, That's, buttery, but yeah. you know, every now and then a piece flakes off too far and gets left in the oven too long, and it becomes, like, sort and of a sharp. hard, crunchy yep. shard of dough. That's oh, Rosalind. You for those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, I feel like that sums her up. You don't need any other information than that. That's all you need. All right, so right next to the dough sharded croissant filled with cream cheese, we have. Hello, everybody. I'm Celine, and I'm playing Tortlaw, Scout, Shaman, Shaman, all around awesome. Shaman. Shaman. <laughs> That's actually, yeah. There's, uh, okay. Uh, if Tort. Which is already a cake. True. <laughs> but the obvious choice. <laughs> yeah. If tort were a pastry, tort would be, okay, this is, this might be, I might be revealing my deep dive of commitment to understanding all pastries, but tort would be a tres leches cake, but one where someone's put frosting on it so you don't know it's a tres leches cake. Because tres leches cakes don't get frosting. Mm. So. But if you go to an American grocery store, they put, <laughs> Ooh. They do that because they don't know what they're talking James about. James B, thank, thank you for your donation. Thank you. Thank you. And also a thank you to the Bard1971 who made oh, yeah. a donation before the show began. Um, so a tres leche cake, or, or rather, a normal looking cake with hidden exotic depths. Yes. That's tortoise. Oh, tres leches. Three of them. But it's really kind of too, too sweet. For me. <laughs> it's too sweet and mm -hmm. it makes you sick. That's a fourth, I mean, you've added a fourth leche to the, <laughs> to yeah. the tres leches cake. <laughs> It is now Quattro Leches cake. Quattro Leches. Um, all right. Well, good. Now we all know. What are you? Uh, we know, know our pastries. I want to know no, what, what pastry are, you what are. You? What pastry I am? Yeah. As the marshal or as pick a character? Uh, well, I mean, as the marshal, right? Oh, you mean. No, the well, what are you as Duff Bullet? Does Duff Bullet? <laughs> That's what yes. I was going to say. Yeah. What, what was I as Duff Bullet? Because Duff Bullet is dead. dead. Is he, though? Yep. yep. <laughs> we all saw it. Yeah, he died. Um, <laughs> Duff Bullet. 
Duff Bullet was a stale pretzel. <laughs> a Bavarian pretzel. Uh, one cooked with loving care uh, by someone with a secret recipe handed down uh, over generations. But at the end of the day, a pretzel that was left out on the countertop for far too long, forgotten, a little bit dusty. Cheese? Uh, no cheese. No, no. No cheese on Duff Bullet's what Bavarian about pretzel. Mustard. Mustard? Wait, you said mustard. You can right? have some on the side. You're gonna need it to choke that thing down. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Thank, you, BSB BSB care. Care. Thank, Thank you, BSB Care. Thank you, BSB Care. For the tip, rather. Let's uh, let's tip. launch into that. Tip. Tip. Before tip. we do, Try. I want to remind tip. you guys tip. that uh, the whole month of September is actually September on Twitch. Woo. So all new subs, first time subs to a channel, are half off all month. So if you um, have been on the fence about subbing to Saving Throw, this is the best. This is the best month to do it because it's half off to do it. Or if there's any other uh, fun channels you want to sub to, that's a good yeah. thing to keep in mind. And if you already have an Amazon Prime account, you can sub for free. It's part of your Amazon Prime uh, account. That's so true. Just as free as normal, though. It's just as it's free not as normal. Half off. Yeah. Free. No. It's half as free. You Why actually not? have to pay. Uh, half. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's ruined. Yeah. So once per month, if you have Amazon Prime, you can uh, sub to a channel of your choice. And if you chose to sub to us, we would very much appreciate yeah. it. We'd love to have and you. And if there. you have Amazon Prime and you're not subbing to something for free, you're leaving money on the table. Night Steve. Night hey, Steve. Steve. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the donation. You guys are making Brian sweat. He's at the con. We got Brian. <laughs> I'm really furious. Brian me. never sweats. <laughs> he only missed. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about uh, the things you can tip for during the game. So uh, we have a system here at Saving Throw where you, the viewers, can can tip money, and that will affect the outcome of the game in various different ways. Let's talk about some of those ways. Okay. Uh, you can tip for a toast. So there are actually five toasts. We finally got this figured out. There are five toasts that are available for 500 gold each. Gold is the free currency you earn just by watching our shows, just by being in the chat and hanging out with us. The first five toasts are 500 gold, and what those can do, you can spend your gold to make us toast to whatever you want us to toast to, provided you're not a jackass. Hasn't been a problem so far. Probably won't, won't happen in the future. Let's keep it that way. It'll be nice. Uh, after those five toasts are redeemed, from that point on, each toast is uh, $5 added to the previous toast. So the first one will be $5, and then 10 and then 15 then 20 so on from there. You can also just make a general tip. A general tip will go towards unlocking the reward tiers that we have listed on the uh, tips tab. In, uh, in the channel, I, I think we can probably post a link to that by hitting exclamation point tips. By entering that in, you can pull those up. You can also click uh, down below the video. There's a link that will pull that up for you as well. All cash tips will go towards unlocking the next uh, reward level. So um, some of those have already been unlocked, and Brian's going to be filling me in on those. But check those out. Some of them can be things like Cursed Spanish Gold. Players, or I, can spend a piece of this to re-roll any trait roll. So that's skills <laughs> or ability rolls. And the players get real into getting a piece of this. Give it, give it, give it, give it. Um, but they cannot re-roll critical fails. And once a player uses them, they go to me, the marshal, and I can use them for any one of my NPCs. Or just to burn them, just to be spiteful. I can do that. Pretty harsh. Yeah, yeah it is if I do that. Uh, another thing that you can unlock are a draw for one of the players at the table. I will roll a d4, and randomly one of these guys will get to draw an official Savage Worlds adventure <clears throat> card. These allow them uh, some narrative or mechanical control over the gameplay. They're not always things that the players can use in a game session, so that's sort of the luck of the draw. But when they are, they often are used uh, to very exciting or bizarre or game-changing effects. Uh, yeah. Last game session, uh, Tortlaw oh. used one in order to fire a yeah. stream of field mice at someone using glorious. a power she does not ordinarily have, and yeah. that was pretty cool. I had a really cool one that I can get into, but... Yeah, well, it'll come up again, just you wait. Gotta use really, it. Really, really yeah. hoping I'm drawing that one. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, on top of that, right, you can also unlock plot armor, a plot armor token. Now, these will stay at the table between game sessions. The Curse Spanish Gold uh, and the draw cards go away, but a plot armor token will persist until used. And what this allows one of the players at the table to do is immediately spend it to knock down the severity of an attack that is made against them automatically without having to do anything to do it. So this can really help them out in a pinch. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal for this mm -hmm. game. There is cleansed Spanish gold additionally available on the uh, reward list. And that is much like what it sounds like. Uh, it's not like cursed Spanish gold. There's no curse. You can just use it. It doesn't go to me. Mm. You just use it. It's fun. It's nice. It also sticks around from session to session until used. If you sub to the channel, or resub to the channel, you can also let Brian and chat know who at the table you would like to have a piece of cursed Spanish gold, and that will also persist between sessions. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think I think that's all of them. In addition to that, there are story rewards that are on the tier list. So that, if we unlock them, allow us allow you guys rather to alter the narrative or add in elements uh, to the game that might not otherwise exist and have been used to great effect by chat in previous games. And it looks like we might have already unlocked a couple of those. So let's Ooh. let's look at that Ooh, stuff snaps. real quick. Um, well, actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna recap before we look at that, and then I'll and then I'll get into all of that. So last session we did not have James Bogue. Instead, we had Michael Holmes filling in as Charlie Shadow, who had gotten kidnapped the previous session session by the Black River Rail Gang, uh, and had been flown away into the night by uh, their leader, who apparently was well versed in witchcraft. Manfred Goss, the leader of the Union Blue soldiers in town, approached uh, the posse and offered to help them get Charlie Shadow back and appealed to their good nature. When that did not work, because he was a stranger, they didn't know that well, he offered to pay them $100 a person for, for his aid. Uh, so they went, they uh, used his intelligence to find the abandoned house that everyone was hiding out at and where Charlie Shadow was being kept and tortured for uh, previous wrongs that he had uh, performed against the Black River Gang. They had a plan that went into effect using the classic military pincher maneuver. Uh, that went off swimmingly. They were able to rescue Charlie Shadow and, in a surprising turn of events, uh, totally take down uh, the leader of the Black River Gang. I believe the flesh was stripped from her bones. <laughs> thank you, Texas. Thank you, Texas. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you for the donation. Thank you, Anna, thank you for your host. Thank you for the host. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, after, after getting Charlie Shadow back, uh, Manfred Goss guilted him into rejoining Union Blue, whom he used to work with back in his uh, less savory days but gave him a few days to conclude his business in town. He was here to find his lost sister. With the help of the posse, they were able to track down the house, uh, and they found some, some rather spooky things there. Uh, there. It looks like the house had been burned down prior to that, uh, but they didn't know that at first because it was inhabited by some ghosts and seemed to be fine at first, but then things took a turn for the dark and the weird. Eventually, though, however, Charlie was able to get through to hit the specter of his sister and calm their spirits. And everyone realized risky pixels. Thank risky. you. Everyone realized. Pixels risk. Risk. everyone realized risky pixels. <laughs> uh, everyone realized that the bodies they found burned in the basement were most likely the result of Colt Holbrook's flamethrower. Uh, perhaps he wanted to test it out a bit before he came into town so many months ago to burn down the town of Coldwater Creek before he was killed and stopped by the Wild Cards gang here. So. That, I believe, is where we left off. But a couple things happened on Twitter uh, with these characters. Rosaline went and spoke to Manfred Goss about getting the payment that uh, was due to them and found out that Manfred Goss had no intention of paying them uh -uh. for anything. In fact, uh, borderline blackmailed them with the information and knowledge that he has that Rosaline can cast magical spells. Try blackmailing a blackmailer. Well, it's uh, that, that would be bad bad news bears if that got out to the <laughs> yeah. town at large. There's a, there's a lynching kind of thing that happens when people find out you're dealing in the black arts. Um, Gabriel Pryor <laughs> had a lovely lunch with uh, the rich Mr. Gerald Richards. Who I thought was a mark at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, seems to be much more aware of things than, than I thought. Yeah. And uh, we saw a little bit of what James Bogue was up to uh, down south near the border of uh, Colorado looking for Adrian Meeker, which is where he's been this, this whole time. Mm -hmm. So you can check that out on Twitter. We'll give you those Twitter handles at the end of the game session. Uh, also, there was a rules goof I made last session as well. <gasps> you guys oh, no. snuck up on the Black River Gang and got the drop on them, which we used mechanically right. However, I reversed the way the cards were supposed to go. You guys were all supposed to go in on hold, and they were supposed to be dealt a card normally, oh. which makes a lot more sense because then you all get to choose when you Wait. go and interrupt them. Because I was sitting there the whole time going, this seems like an advantage for them that I can <laughs> choose for them to go at any point. That can't be right, because it wasn't. So mm -hmm. now we know for next time. Uh, also, everyone advanced after they got yeah. some experience points. They are now seasoned characters, no longer novices. These guys are Spicy. seasoned. They have ranked up in the no, Savage World dull, system. No flavorless characters we've been playing mm -hmm. before. Right? <laughs> yeah. Properly salted and peppered at this point. So that opens up a whole lot of new edges uh, and things that they can do, which they did in between sessions. Uh, James Bogue took the Marksman Edge, which allows him to uh, get a much better shooting role if he doesn't move if before he moves, makes that shot. I get plus two. Right? Wow. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Pryor took Fates Favored, which is an edge that allows him to, once per game session, spend any Fate Chip as though it were a blue Fate Chip, which are the best ones to uh, be able to utilize. Yeah. 
Rosaline took dodge, which makes her much harder to hit with ranged attacks. Mm -hmm. And Tortla took uh, extra power points, which gives her more juice for all of her shamanic spells. Shimona. Mm. Um, See, now it's... So yeah. now, now, everyone's, it's now everyone's caught up. Good. Nope. No? Nope. Everyone's not caught up? We're not caught no, up? No, we are. No, I'm just saying no oh. to that thing. Oh, to the oh. shit oh. Oh. Brian is <laughs> firmly against Michael Jackson yeah. references. Oh. Um, okay, cool. So we've recapped. We did that. Let's uh, let's draw some fate chips for everybody here. Yeah. Together. Ooh yeah. Ooh. Ooh. These are regular. These are regular. Yeah. These are regular. Yeah. Sure. All right. So you were going to draw it's three fate chips. You're a normal guy with three fate chips. Such a normal guy. Three whites. Oh Such a normal guy. Yeah, I'm a normal guy. normal guy. Four. Is it four? Put one back. Stop it. <laughs> Gabriel Pryor, uh, you get five. If I draw all blues, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be upsetting. But that would be every blue in the hat, so everyone else would be upset at you as well. It's, that's true. You get five on account of the edges you took that make you extra lucky. One, two. You're trying to feel them out? Three. No, there, I'm trying to. Did you mark out too many? The blues feel different. Do they? <laughs> oh, yeah. They feel bluer? Yeah. All right, I got. Four whites and a blue. Four whites there and a you blue. Go. You're leaving all the reds for Rosaline, us, Rosaline, you get you three. Take them. It would have been better if I'd gotten a red. Yeah, it it would have. Been. It would have really um, been better. I got the red. <laughs> I got two white and a red. And Tortla only gets two. She suffers from bad dreams. She gets less fake chips at the beginning of each session. Only ghost sliches. Two whites. Just Where two are all those blue? <laughs> all the blue? And the red. Funny you ask, because okay. I get one yeah, for each of you. Here it comes. But it doesn't matter because reds are blue for me. I got four whites. <laughs> so you guys definitely want some more fake chips from here. Um, so Hello. let's talk about fake chips while I dip these in beer. <laughs> um, White fate chips. As is tradition. Yes, as is the <laughs> tradition at the beginning of a game of wild cards. White fate chips can be spent to re-roll any trait roll, so that's skill or attribute rolls. Um, they can even be used to re-roll critical failures, which is a very useful thing that Cursed Managed Gold cannot do. Uh, you can also use white fate chips in order to soak wounds. So if you are being attacked and you are being dealt wounds in the form of damage, and keep in mind, wild cards can only take three wounds. If they take one more than that, they could potentially die. Uh, but you can spend one of these to try and reduce the severity of a uh, attack, and you can also spend one at any point to automatically become unshaken, which is a status you can get in combat that's very unpleasant. Red fate chips work just like white fate chips, with the added power that you can spend one to add a d6 to any roll that you make, except for damage. Um, but if you use a red fate chip in that way, then that red fate chip goes to me, the marshal, and I can use it how I see fit. And then blue fate chips work just like red fate chips with no drawback. You can add that d6, and it costs you nothing, which is why Fate's Favorite is a really cool edge. It's good. Um, so I think we're all, we're all caught up there. Did you mention that Toast is a, is a command? I yeah, did I, not. I, I mentioned it in chat. Great, cool. But Brian did. Brian's on it. So let's, I'm going to saddle up. Let's saddle up, guys. I'm going to put my hat on. Everyone else already has their hats on because they're fancy folk. And let's, uh, let's get to some of, these, some of these things here on my screen. So everyone... Raise a glass or your shot glass, seeing as this is our first toast. This one comes from the Bard 1971. Mm -hmm. He would like us to toast, May we live long lives and our games always be fun. <clears throat> May we live long lives and our games always be fun. Set them up very carefully. And knock them down. Oh. Ah, I shot a beer. <laughs> Ooh, that Don't, was half tequila and half vodka. <laughs> Don't knock what? them too far down. What bad? James V 1971 would like us to toast, the turtle package for extra life. Anything for the kids. The, the turtle, turtle package for extra life. Anything for the kids. Set them up. Knock them down. BSB Care. Yes. Yep. Woo. To Anxiety, the handmaiden of creativity. <laughs> to Anxiety, the handmaiden of creativity. Set them up and knock them down. Amen to that. And uh, Texas Devin would like oh. us to toast the exact same thing. Is that accurate? Uh, probably not. Go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Because that seems we'll be, we'll unlikely. <laughs> we'll circle back to Texas Devin's toast. Rixie Pixels would like us to toast. May today's best be tomorrow's worst. May today's best be tomorrow's worst. Set them up. Knock them down. Which sounds like a negative thing until you think about it. No, no, it. no. It's good, yeah. There we go. Oh, we got Texas Devon. Okay, here we go. Texas mm -hmm. Devon. Oh, Texas Devon's playing a little. He's having a goof with us. Oh, oh, Texas goofy, Devon would like no, us that to. That was me. That's that you. Was, that was me. I'll own that. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Texas Devon, aka Brian. Oh no, I mean I I goofed. Oh, uh, that was me. Oh, oh well, no, I was saying he's goofing with us because of his toast, which is and pay attention closely, okay. everyone. 
I slit a sheet. A sheet I slit. Oh. Upon a slitted sheet I sit. I, I slit a sheet. A sheet I slit. slit. Upon a slitted sheet, sheet I sit. Set them up. Knock we it down. We are the we fucking actors. We are the drama kids. For what? Life. What? We also know Mother Smucker. Um, <laughs> next up, Griffin, O F H, would like us to toast Falcon Hollow to proper seasoning, <laughs> finally paying off. To, to proper seasoning, finally paying off. Set him up and knock him down. And Cortra, wow, uh, resubbed. Oh, or subbed, and uh, oh, no. would like the piece of cursed Spanish gold to go to Gabriel Pryor. Ooh. Oh, oh hey. Mr. Pryor. Who was that? Cortra. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. I thank appreciate you. Chat it. has also unlocked a couple of story tiers. Uh, wow. Uh, well, I'm sorry, just one story tier, but some other tiers as well. The story tier unlocked is On the Wings of Felicia's Grace. So thank you very much for that, guys. Mm. Uh, I always like saying the names of story tiers because it means nothing to anyone at the table. Um, they have it's also Felicia Day. Felicia Day, right? Yeah, it's, it's clearly like Felicia Day is going to come through that door. For sure. Play with us right now. Chad has also <laughs> unlocked a fistful of cursed Spanish gold for the tables. So oh, yeah, yeah, pieces there. You. And a draw. Let's see for who. Ooh. I'm going to use the die that loves Let's repeating the same out. number over and over again. The draw is for James Bogue. Oh, boy. James Bogue. Better be good. Draw. Oh. You don't want that one? Right, this is the one. Just this one. Is the one. Just one. What'd you get? On my mark, your hero and any adjacent allies add plus four to their next trait rolls. The allies must be adjacent when the card is played to receive the bonus. I think that's, that's the good. third time we've drawn that one. We it have is, drawn it a lot. But, but it has only been used once. Uh, yeah. The, the bar in 1971. Thank you. Thank you. For the Thank you. Well, um, well, and keep in mind, that can be used outside of combat as well. It mm -hmm. in no way is limited to just being in combat. So everyone needs to bunch up around Dom. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Just continually. Just At the table, I'm sorry. Yeah, in everybody real life, scoot, everyone bunch up by Dom. Kidding. Just kidding, guys. All right. Let's jump into it, shall we? Okay. okay. Uh, James Bogue. Yes. So we saw what happened down by the border uh, where you met a rather unsavory fellow by the name of Fletcher who gave you a little information that Adrian Meeker had headed north. Yeah. And seemed to think that you didn't have as much information as you should have trying to track down someone like Adrian Meeker. So you headed north, back up to Denver. Uh, and you did a little asking around, and you were able to find out that not too long before you had arrived in town, uh, there had been someone asking around and recruiting unsavory folks in the town. Uh, you, you did some, some digging in some of the back alleyways and the, the black market channels that you have such a great nose for seeking out. Uh, and from what you could tell, someone with some amount of influence was recruiting men around Denver uh, and then heading north with them. That's about all you were able to figure out. Uh, people were pretty tight-lipped about it. It seemed like no one really had any direct dealings with whoever was in charge of this recruitment, but something about it uh, sets, your, sets your mustache on edge. Yeah. You're, uh, you're pretty sure this has Sneaker's fingerprints on it. Mm -hmm. But you lost his trail there, and you know he's continuing to head north. Now, you were worried that that might include Coldwater Creek, because uh, you know he was heading north to deal with some sort of railroad business. And Coldwater Creek is uh, about to have a new railhead. Pretty, pretty hot topic in town that these guys have been dealing with while you were away. But um, that's all you were able to figure out. Okay. So you're heading back up to Coldwater Creek to kind of uh, regroup okay. and then maybe strike out and get some more information at a later date. So you've been riding hard all day mm -hmm. uh, and it's evening now and you're not too far away from town. But as you are riding on uh, your horse, Dot, mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's definitely dark out. Uh, the, the moon is giving you a little bit of light but clouds keep passing over it so you have to kind of go slowly in order to make sure that your horse can find her footing. But uh, make a notice roll for me, and make it at a at a minus one on account of the dim light, James Bogue. So it's actually a plus one then. All right, because you've got a plus to your notice. Now remember, in Savage Worlds, you're always trying to generally roll at least a four. That's the target number, and every four you get over that is a raise, which means you were even better at it. So what did you roll? That's a four. You rolled a four. Yeah. That is enough to succeed. Yeah. Um, so up in front of you to the right, you catch uh, through through uh, a little like dense bit of brush what looks like the barest flickers of a campfire. 
uh, it appears that there might be um, some people like maybe down an embankment behind that brush with their with their campfire up. Uh, and these are the only people that you've encountered thus far since the sun went down. Uh, and how far away out of cold water am I? Uh, a few hours a away. Few hours. Uh, it's probably around ten o'clock at night at this point. Is this is am I on am I on like the the road? Into you are town? on the main road into town. Okay. Um. And you rolled, you rolled what? You rolled a four? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, uh, you, you hear, um, also, in addition to seeing the campfire, you hear what sounds like a, a heated exchange between, between men coming from down there. You can't make anything out, but, but someone seems to be raising their voice in uh, anger or excitement. You can't quite tell. Uh, okay. Um, I'll, uh, I'll saddle off of uh, Dot and sort of pull pull her into, you know, tie her up on the woods and maybe try and get a closer gander at, at, at them. You're going to try and sneak up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so make a stealth roll for me. Perfect. Also, chat has unlocked the story tier. Their reputation precedes them. So oh. thank you very much for that, chat. Thank you. Uh, stealth is just agility, right? Uh, no, stealth oh. is a skill. So if you don't have it, you're going to be making it at a D4 minus 2. D4 minus 2. But you also roll your wild wow. die with that. You always get your extra D6 as a wild card. Wild cards are just good at things. Yes. So your 4 aced. Yep. And when we say so. ace, that means it rolled the top amount on that die, so you get to roll it again. So that's a 4. That's a 4. Yeah. Okay. That's enough to be pretty stealthy. So you you tie Dot off a little ways, and you you sort of cautiously go go creeping up until you make it to the, the brush, and you can kind of peer through it and see down over the embankment. Mm -hmm. uh, you see two men on horseback uh, that are around this campfire, and there are two men sitting by the fire. Uh, the men on horseback have uh, have rifles on across their saddles, and they have their hands rested on them. And the men sitting on a log by the fire also have their hands resting on their uh, revolvers at their hips. And the men on horseback seem to be the ones that are getting heated and animated while the men sitting down by the fire are just sort of uh, waiting and, and watching. Okay. Um, and you, you hear s snippets of, of things. The uh, men on horseback seem to be berating the seated men for being stupid, uh, making, making the wrong decision, uh, but, but you can't quite hear a whole lot from here. Any uh, signifying things, badges, uniforms, anything like that? Definitely no badges, uh, definitely no uniforms. These okay. guys have a lot of uh, trail dust on them. It looks uh -huh. like they've been out, both, both groups have been out in the wilderness for a while, and they look like rough customers, all of them. Hmm. Uh, not necessarily something I want to <laughs> get involved with. Um, but it has piqued my curiosity. Uh, I guess I will make my way. So basically, it's like an embankment going going down, right? Then and then, if I follow it around, would that take me around? Or the only way to get in there is to like? Yeah, I mean, you could go. You could kind of double back the way you came and go go down the slope and kind of come around it from the other side. Uh -huh. You'd be going behind the men on horseback at that point. Okay. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Okay. I'm gonna do that, and and I'm gonna get Dot, and I'm gonna walk with Dot basically behind me. Okay. I'm not gonna ride. Not gonna be on Dot. Are you gonna be stealthy? Or are you just gonna approach? With your I'm horse? just I'm just gonna approach. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you circle back. You grab Dot, and you uh, you lead her by the reins down down there. Um, and as you get closer, badge is still off, by the way. Your badge is still off. You yeah. have your badge tucked away. Yeah. Okay, that's probably for the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as you get closer, you hear uh, them quiet down, and you distinctly hear hear one of them go, "Shh, what was that? You hear that? Somebody's out there." And I, I'll just uh, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, I saw the fire. Sorry, I couldn't help but uh, 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 pull over. I've been I've been riding all day, and boy, I, I could I could use a place to set down and. If you boys have got this fire going, I could, uh, I could certainly, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just sort of take take a take a breather before I head into town. So the two on horseback kind of whip whip over to the two seated, and they go, "He a friend of yours? You got you got other friends out there in the dark circling around?" And the the two seated just kind of look at each other and look at you and shake their heads. Uh, but one of them pipes up, uh, "Well, sure, we don't want to be rude to a, a stranger who just wants to share a fire. Sure." Uh, you're you're welcome, stranger. Come, 
grab a seat here. We's, uh, these two was just leaving. And the two on, on horseback just kind of glower at him, but they don't appear to be leaving. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, oh, where are they now? Well, uh, well that's, that's too bad. Uh, my, my trail food is, is quite nice. Uh, well, uh, I'll just tie up my horse around here. What are you wearing? I'm, I'm wearing Describe my... Describe it sexily. <laughs> okay. How, uh, I guess Hello. more specifically, <laughs> what I'm asking is, uh, what quality of uh, clothes are you wearing? Um, they're, they're my trail clothes. So they're, they're, they're fair, fair to middling, but they're certainly dust covered and mud covered on the bottom. I mean, um, my, my uh, mini here, in fact, is, it's just got mud all along the bottom. Okay. So it's, it's, they're okay, they're relatively nice, but not, you know. Well, and you're a tough looking customer yourself, yeah. and nothing about you overtly screams, uh, I'm rich, please rob me. So yeah. uh, they approach, not that they're interested in that, I'm just saying, sure. hypothetically. Sure. Uh, so yeah, you, you can approach and everyone just sort of eyes you warily as you get closer to the fire. Yeah, uh, tie up, dot, get to the fire. Oh boy, it's starting to feel a little chilly out there. I feel like, uh, there's a cold wind coming in there. Th thank you so much. Sure, yeah, about that time of year. Um, where are you headed? Oh, uh, uh, the Coldwater Creek. That's so. And these are the two on, on horseback mm -hmm. asking. Uh, you, uh, you from there? No, just passing through. I see. Uh, whereabouts from? I was coming from Denver. Ah, of course, makes sense. You got business there, or...? Uh, no, just uh, uh, I heard that there was uh, some some uh, ghost rock uh, uh, business going on up there, and and uh, it struck my fancy. I was just maybe thinking I could maybe make my mark when where uh, wherever I end up. So, uh, do you have your gun at your hip? Yeah. Is it visible? Uh, uh, I have a long. I have you know a my, duster. Yeah. Uh, so. It's not readily visible. Okay. Um, they give you a once-over all the same, and, and one of them goes, uh, you look like a, a man that knows how to handle himself. I, I don't know. I've, I've seen a few things, I guess. Uh, you, you know, you have to when you're getting out here in this, uh, this part of the country. Uh, tell me, you um, wouldn't by any chance be looking for some work, would you? Well, what kind of work are we talking well, uh, what we are in search of, as I was explaining to uh, these two morons here sitting by the fire, is uh, we're looking for people who aren't afraid to get their hands a little dirty from time to time, uh, people who can handle themselves, men who can be relied on, and who are looking to make uh, a little bit of quick money, as it were, and then be on their way. As he says that, I want to kind of look over at the guys who are sitting down and sort of scam their reaction to this question. Okay, uh, they're, they're looking at each other again with like an arched eyebrow and just sort of smiling like they are privy to some inside joke that everyone else doesn't know. And one of them pipes up. And as we said before, we are already gainfully employed and uh, have all the work that we can handle. So thank you very much, but you can be on your way. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I might, I might, uh, I might be, uh, I, I don't know if these old hands will, uh, you know, could do you much good. I, I'm not sure what you're after, but all I want is a, is a, uh, a stake of my own and, and uh, some, some good land to, uh, to work it, and uh, that's all I need right now. They, as you start talking about all that stuff, they immediately look, like, they check out. They lose interest entirely, yeah. and they just look at each other, and they go, Pfft. All right. Uh, they looked down at the two by the fire and they said, we'll be circling back to talk to you later on. So you think about what we asked. And then they look up at you and just sort of like, you look like something that they might have found on the underside of their boot sure. in their eyes. You can see it. And then they just kind of hitch their horses out into the darkness. And the other two at the, the fire just kind of watch them go and then relax their grips a bit on the pistol butts. Mm -hmm. And they, they turn to you and they, they say, uh, we, uh, we thank you for interrupting that. Things were taking a turn for the, the worse there. Uh, you mind telling me what those boys wanted? Well, probably wouldn't be of much interest to you. 
Uh, you seem like you're out here looking for uh, good, honest work. But uh, they are recruiting for uh, some so-and-so. But uh, as we tried to tell them, we already work for some so-and-so, so we had no business in jumping ship and joining up with their crew. Huh. Lots of so-and-sos going on around here. Yeah, well, so it would seem. Hmm. Well, uh, where are you boys headed? Oh, we're not heading anywhere. We're just kind of uh, staying around about these parts. Have been for a while. We're, um, they kind of give you a, a look again. Doing a little bit of a recruiting drive of our own. So say, I know what it was you told them, and, and maybe that's true, but as they said, you do look like someone who can handle himself in a fight. So are you sure that it is good, honest work that you're looking for? Because if not, uh, we might have someone that uh, could make good use of you as well. Well, you best be coming at me with a better, pl uh, better, uh, better story than they had. Well, um, you're probably not from around these parts, so uh, the name might not mean a lot to you, but... Uh, we work for a pretty rough customer that's made quite a reputation for himself around these parts, uh, and and parts hereabouts. Uh, named Colt Holbrook. Strike any bells for him? Can't say it does. Make a persuade <laughs> roll for me. <laughs> um, Knew it. Persuade. So that's a D four with because I don't have it. Right? You don't have it. So D four yeah. minus two. Yikes. Uh, What'd you roll? A uh, two. A two? Yeah. That is not a success. No. A four, a, oh, yeah. Would you but like to re-roll or spend a piece of cursed Spanish gold? Mm. You're going to use a fate chip to re-roll. All right. Re-roll. Oh, you, oh, you aced on your there six sided go. there. Nice. All right. So that's, what was it minus? Uh, minus two. So uh, that's a seven. Okay. Um, so implacably... Stoic as ever, uh, you you tell them that, and they look you over and they say, "Well, that's that's fair." As we said, you're not from around here, but um, he's a he's a man of some renown and some influence in these areas. And if you are looking to make a bit of money, uh, he's probably the person who's going to be running Coldwater Creek not too long from now. So uh, now might be a good time to choose the right side. You don't say. So, those fellas were small potatoes, as far as we're concerned. Uh huh. Out of towners, not from around these parts. I uh, understand. I understand. This uh, Holbrook pay, pay well. Uh, pretty well, if yeah. you can work. You you been in his employ long? Uh, well, not too long. Uh, just more. We're more recent hires. Mm -hmm. uh, seems that he recently lost a large quantity of his men and has been spending some time mustering up uh, some, some new forces. Mm. Hmm. Which is where you could come in. A man like you can handle himself, could do well. <laughs> oh man, I want to shoot them so bad. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, um, <laughs> uh, I slowly reach in to grab my pipe. Okay. Uh, as you do that, you feel the uh, your the, s the bottom of your stomach drop out as you feel cold steel pressed against the back of your neck, and uh, you hear a voice from behind you say, uh, "That's that's far enough." You have me at a disadvantage, friend. Clearly. Uh. Now, uh, you two. I don't know who it is you think you've been talking here, but. Uh, this man wants no part of the business that you're proposing. And they kind of look up to whoever is standing behind you and seem uh, suddenly pale. And they, they go quiet and they go, oh, um, we, we didn't mean no disrespect. Um, sure, we didn't know. We, we thought he was a stranger. And uh, the voice behind you says, oh, he's no stranger. Now, uh, I don't want to hurt you, Mr. Bogue. And then you hear something that makes your blood run cold. Because from the very same spot, you hear what sounds like an entirely different person say, oh, maybe I do. Oh. No. No, not just yet. Now here's what's going to happen. 
You two, you're going to sit right where you are, and you're going to take your guns down and train them here on Mr. Bogue. Mr. Bogue, you are going to back away. You're going to get on your horse, and you're going to keep riding. You're not going to circle back this way, and you're not going to make any move against anyone here, because when I tell you that you are outmanned and outgunned here, you should trust me that there are more people hereabouts than you can see or notice right now. As you said, I have you at a disadvantage, and let's keep it that way. So I'm going to walk you over to your horse. You're going to get on, and you're not going to look back until you're quite a ways down the road. Is that clear? I'll just walk back. All right, so you feel the, the muzzle of the gun jammed right into the back of your neck, all the way over to Dot, and uh, you get up on the horse. Uh, do you try and look back behind you? Uh, sure. Yeah? Are you yeah. trying to be yeah. sneaky about it? Yeah. Make a stealth roll. <laughs> oh, great. Great, 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 great. Oh. That's, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, okay. oh you're going to re-roll it. Okay. Yeah. All right. We, we have Curse Spanish. I know, I know, I know. Too. But he doesn't get these, so. That's true. <laughs> I don't want to start the game with, uh, with that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's still a zero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a piece of cursed Spanish gold going okay. into the Marshall's stash. Mm. Come on, baby. Come on. You aced your oh, four. Nice. Okay, okay. Come on. Damn Hi. it! <laughs> so close. Oh, no! Would you roll? A one? Yeah. Okay, so that's a three all, so, all together? Yes. Um, well, that's uh, a tie. He also rolled a three on his notice. So, um, as you as you try and furtively turn your head to see, like like I'm getting getting on the horse and just kind of yeah. As you, you know. try and do that, you hear the hammer cock into place on the gun. He said, "Now, now, Mr. Bogue, I feel my instructions were very clear. And as I said, I, I don't want to use this. Not well, not yet, at least. So, are you going to try again or no? Okay. No. So you get on the horse and. Ride in the direction of town? Yeah. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And leave this uh, campfire. I would use all of these things up. I know. <laughs> leave this campfire receding into the night behind you. I, I was this close to being like, you think, what would Gabe do? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think I can common bond from a distance. <laughs> that was a Saturday night. Uh, the next morning is uh, church. Oh. And Gabriel Pryor is giving one of his famous standing room only packed house sermons. Uh, he's finishing up, as it were. Um, and uh, Rosaline, you're in the church, I assume, tort law. Uh, you are in town. You've missed many of his sermons, but you're probably not super interested in, in them, if I had to guess. Yeah. Uh, I would have been um, out in the woods doing my thing, okay. my normal ritual thing, also making probably a fetish. Okay. What, uh, what fetish would you be making? Uh, the one that I normally do, the protective one. Armor? Law. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so uh, do you, you have to make a roll to do that, so go ahead and make your uh, shaman, tribal medicine roll. And then I believe you have to, do you have to spend points to make that? It's been a while since we've had uh, that no. happen. Okay. Oof. Ooh, that's a one and a three. Okay, I guess I fail at that. Okay, so you, you try to do it, but for some reason you can't find the right materials out in the woods. You're, you're, maybe you've made this so many times that you've used up the, the local, um, B birch twigs mm. that you use mm. to make your armor fetish, so you can't quite find all the materials. Not concentrating well. It doesn't it's seem like to be working. Things are, I got things on my mind. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Things. So um, you're finishing up your sermon, and you remember the conversation that you had with, uh, with Gerald Richards in mm. town. So uh, again, you, you look out over your congregation, and, and all of them are, are staring at you uh, raptly. Um, and you remember that, that he suggested that, that maybe you try and um, instruct them to do something that, that might better their lives or the, or the lives of others. So with that in mind, how would you end your sermon, Gabriel Pryor? So Gabe has, throughout his sermon, still done his basic, you know, his peons against um, greed and, and gift to the church, things like that, all the stuff that's about zealotry and that sort of thing. But... As he gets to the end, he thinks about what was said and turns and, and looks towards the congregation. 
And before you get started, you see the back door, the, the front door of the church, rather, open up and James Bogue step in through the church doors and assume his customary uh, stance by the, by the doorway. Before we end today's sermon, I would like to share with you all a little story or a little event that happened to me over the last week. Now, in the duty of helping a stranger find their missing family, I was put in the position of reading a prayer over the bodies of a burned child, a burned mother, and a burned father who had been killed by Holbrook before his attack on the town. Now when you say that, quite a ripple of activity goes through your congregation because as you well know, rumors are going around town that Holbrook somehow is, uh, is back and, is, and uh, is up to no good in, in the area, but everyone knows Holbrook was killed. Mm -hmm. uh, they, some of them saw it happen and everyone's heard the story, so that, that rumor is flying like wildfire through your church. Now their bodies had sat unfound in their house for months. And it occurs to me that in these times, in this wide area out west, we are all of us alone. But that is not what Christians should be. We should be a community. So I would like each and every one of you, no matter how inconvenient it may be, no matter how far away they may be, to visit upon your neighbor sometime this week. Learn who they are, learn what their problems are, and do one thing to try and ease their lives. Because we cannot be individuals out here, out west. We must be a community. And we must not let things like this happen where our bodies lie unfound for months. We are Christians and we are Cold Water Creek. And that should be one in the same. So go out and do something that helps your neighbor, whatever it may be. Amen. Amen, preacher. And everyone, you know, everyone starts uh, up their course. Will you two make a spirit roll for me, please? Of course. All right. Four. You got a four? What did you get, James? Three. A three. <laughs> okay. Um... All right. So uh, everyone, everyone realizes uh, you, you lead them in the in the in the final prayer, the the final song. What, we do whatever, a right? <laughs> whatever mongrel church service you've stitched <laughs> together, um, and uh, the bell starts ringing, letting everyone know that the church is dismissed, and everyone starts filing outside. But Prudence heads outside first, goes right outside, and looks at the front of the church walls, and she goes, "Preacher, it happened again!" Oh, and she you just go up. You see her rip something off the wall, and she comes. Storming up the aisle to you, she says, I swear to you, if I ever find these people, I, I'm just, I just want to wring their necks. Will you make a notice, Wolf? Just you. Just you. Me? Yeah, just you. All right, that's a four. For just the <laughs> briefest of seconds, you see something uh, maniacal in Prudence's eyes. Just a, a small flicker of something that vanishes as soon as you see it. Look! Look, look at this, this slanderous, libelous, lying, uh, look at them yes. perverting the word of, of, of God in, in the church itself. Uh. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur, the scions of Athena. Prudence. Don't be fooled, they say over and over again on that, as though, as, as though the, the, the Bible is, is some sort of, 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 of made-up story that they're, they're trying to, and then they use the, 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 the very word itself uh, Prudence, against us to, to I have told you before, the these people are trying to rile us up. Well, it is working, preacher, it is working. And you see a bunch of people outside of the church kind of like looking up at those, and uh, some of them are dismissing them outright, and some of them are kind of looking at one another and I crumple this up, but I'm gonna uncrumple it so we can show it. Better. Sure, sure. But you crumple it up. That very was a dramatic. dramatic. Yeah. No, I got it. I uh, got it. Movement, but I do kind of think people should be able to see it. I'm sorry. It's it's pretty. It's a different verse than it was before. It might be a little hard to see. Here, take a picture too. Uh, a little to the right. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's not Islands of the Thief. Here we go. Um, so <laughs> it's, it takes you a little while to get her uh, to, to calm down enough to, well, <sighs> Preacher, I, once again, your wisdom and cooler head prevails, and I will, I will just head into town and try and enjoy my Sunday without um, letting these people rile me up, as you said. And I, I wish that I had your patience and your grace. Well, Prudence, what, what I think we can do best about this is if you do hear any talk of anyone who might know who these people are, just let me know. You know what? Or better yet, we should post a guard. But Next, next Sunday, we should have someone keeping a lookout because this definitely wasn't like this when I came into church this morning, so it must be happening at some point during the service. We should have someone out front well, keeping a lookout. I don't know about a God in the house of God, but that sounded almost the same word. <laughs> uh, I did, but I, I took your meaning, preacher. But perhaps a lookout is not such a bad idea. Well, I will volunteer myself. I will sit right by the front window so that I can both hear your sermon and stare outside. Nightsteed, thank you very much. Thank you, Nightsteed. And I will make sure that this does not happen again. They do not defile this house of the Lord. Uh, at, at least of all, while everyone is inside, uh, you know, feeling a, a close spiritual connection, very close, feeling very, very close um, to God. Well, Prudence, don't do anything rash, but if you would like to stand outside of the church and make sure that hooligans are not interrupting our services, why, I, I am not one to tell you that you cannot do I that. will be inside, Preacher, because I would not miss your sermon for, for the world, but I will be keeping a sharp eye outside the window, and I will recruit others to do the same. Of course. We will be, we will be warriors for the church. Vigilant. I, I, I would expect no less of someone as devout and zealous as you. Thank you. But please, enjoy your Sunday, and thank you for the sermon. It was quite lovely. You as well. And she bustles off down uh, into town. So once everyone has kind of uh, made their way down into town, uh, you guys are left with the returned James Bogue. And Tortlaw, you heard that bell ringing out in the woods, which is your signal that all of Ugh, the uh, all irritating church-going folk thank have goodness. left. Ugh. Church people, am I right? No, you are right, <laughs> for sure. Well, James, you're back. You disappeared without. Well, James. you left a note, but yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I he had to come in you. on me being uh, uncharacteristically uh, touchy for a moment there. No, it's uh, you uh, walked out on quite the quite the moment for our happy little town. Sounds like I missed quite a round. You uh, missed quite a bit, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I look forward to hearing the stories. I, I, have, I have news myself, so oh. uh, perhaps, perhaps we can go into the church once everyone is filed out. Well, of course. Tort, you have my change for... <laughs> I do. You know what, James? I appreciated you so much that I did not eat any breakfast soup. Here's your $20 back. Why, Tort? <laughs> I know! It's shocking. Did you? Okay. <laughs> I totally ate breakfast soup this whole time with my winnings from the game. With your blackjack winnings, of course, yeah. Right. You, you had a bit more than that, though. You had more money. After. No, I didn't. I had $20 that James Bogue left me, and I've just returned it to him. Hmm. A few things happened while you were gone. Um, yes. Apparently... Some of them very important. Some of them not important. All right. We now did you... some gambling just while you were gone. Sounds like. Well, this is a, this is a good, good question at this point. So if everyone has filed away and you guys are heading back into church to catch each other up on what's been going on, what would you guys catch James Bogue up on? What are the, the pertinent things that he should know while he was gone? I mean, I think I, I mean, definitely tell him about um, the fact that we found this family with that seemingly was killed by Holbrook, and, and definitely tell him about the uh, rail lines and all the stuff going on, because Union Blue is probably going to come back around, maybe Black River, and it's something that all of us need to know about mm -hmm. and be prepared for. Sure. I mean, uh, for the most part, I imagine we fill him in on everything and then ask what the hell he was doing. Well, I'm just curious to see if there's any things that stand out in your head that you I want to refer. Uh, I would particularly point out that... Uh, Rosaline's been a little uh, loosey-goosey. More people know about the uh, bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, vaporize. 
mm. than before. Also, she has been acting a bit uh, more shaken lately as well. Uh, things seem to be getting to her more, and uh, she's complained of bad dreams and, and things like that, too. Mm. Gabriel, anything that stands out for you that you would want to let him know? Any, I think, uh, I think any small bit of information that he might have missed while he was out of town that might be a big, anything. big deal? Anything at all. Anything at all. <laughs> any tiny specific bit of information. You, you seem very, very yeah, I just want to see, I just want to see what you guys, what were you going to say? I, I was thinking that most of this tiny specific information that I've learned recently is, is personal and I'm going to keep it to myself. Of course. Um, but I, I can't think of much. Me too. Uh... Not much that has to do with James Bogue. I think, I mean, we tell him about the, the house and about, you know, the death and about the fact that it seems like Holbrook did it, but it doesn't seem like it was recent, right? No, no. Yeah. Um, no. At, at some point, in a very offhand sort of like burying the lead manner, you guys mentioned that a guy came ra running out of the woods saying that, that Cole Holbrook might be back and that everyone's oh. talking about that, but whatever, not a big deal. Anyways, how's your day? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, oh, before right. we hear, guy. before we hear, Chad has unlocked another drow. Drow. Four. Ooh. Number four, that is Tortla. It aces, so you have to roll it again. No, because <laughs> we don't It'll have be number eight. eight people here at the table. So draw Tortla. Good one. Get a good one. I want, I want, I want. Uh, rub them all. I got to rub them. You got to rub them. You, 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 had had you had it. You had it. You had that good one. Yeah, you did have it. Was you it the one I got now? No one can remember. No, you had it for. No man can say. All right, just keep moving on. I have no idea how I did that. For the duration of one combat, our senior character gains the benefit of one edge, regardless of requirements. That is the no exact same one. one. <laughs> that is the, the last exact game. same one. The exact yeah, same is. one. That's really. Uh, that this sucks. card and I are connected. Well, how about that? That's Spiritually. Some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, they fill you in on that, James Boke. Um, huh. Well. All right then. Let's I'm have sure fun. it was the ramblings, ramblings of a madman, or at least I hope so. I mean, we all saw Holbrook die. <clears throat> well, let me let me fill you in a little bit on where I've been. Um, as you know, I uh, I've been tracking the Baron, uh, uh, and uh, it seems Coldwater has been somewhat of a dead end for a little while. So I decided to range a little bit further south. Uh, got some information that uh, one of his underbosses was working in Denver. Once I got there, it seems he had been moving on and moving north somewhere, somewhere that uh, might be having some rail activity. Uh, I don't know much beyond that. It, there's a number of different towns that are getting a rail, a railhead, a rail line running through them. So it could be cold water, could be anywhere. Um, well, we're certainly having our issues with the rail line here. I don't know if we could safely say we have connections with either of the major railroads at this point. Well, we have bad ones at the very least. Well, bad ones might be just enough. Uh, beyond that, um, had a strange interaction coming back into town. Something... Now, you know I don't often get uh, shaken, but something was strange about this. Uh, Gentleman uh, had a campfire a few miles outside of town. And, uh, well, they had mentioned that they were hiring for Holbrook. What? Okay. This is all starting to make sense to me now. People have seen that Holbrook has been removed from the picture, and there's a vacuum in the place where he used to be. Now, if I was in that position and I wanted to, to bring up the superstitious part and people and immediately pull into power, I would start using Holbrook's name, too. It must be some new gang leader who's coming in, taking the place of a dead man, and trying to immediately take over his reputation and organization. I feel... no, I'm... You're saying we haven't... you haven't seen enough strange stuff to believe this little thing, like someone coming back from the dead, which, mm, wait, what does that remind me of your religion? Your uh, fake religion. I don't have a religion. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> your fake religion. But, uh, all right. Are you saying, hope? Oh, never mind. Have I'm you not. Run, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, like, there's a precedence. Have mm -hmm. you run into something like that before, though? Uh, someone coming back from the dead like that? 
I have heard stories. You've heard, you've actually heard stories though. I've heard stories from him about this guy. All right, but outside of... I didn't make that up. I didn't, didn't come up with that one. So outside of that, have you heard of anything in, in all of your dealings? This is what I know. The spirits can do amazing things. You've seen it. They make bullets leave your body. Come on. But bringing some, someone back from the dead Weird seems quite hard. Weird flying up into the air. Yes, well, that's on. one I get. Someone being vaporized by a bunch of playing cards? Come on. But it seems like on the scale of like doably weird, it seemed pretty low. Well, Bring to me, unvaporizing somebody seems a lot more difficult than vaporizing somebody. Wait, that one is very different, bringing someone back from the dead. I've never come upon that before. Right? I wouldn't come upon um, that. So both of you make a knowledge roll for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smarts? Uh, that is smarts. This will be a common knowledge roll for just the two of you. Uh, and James Bogue, you've spent a fair amount of time in the West as well. Make a uh, knowledge, a smarts roll at a minus two for me. Five. Four. Five. Wow. Oh, he's gonna know more than he us. He knows stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's a uh -oh. six. Six. Oh. So four, five, and six. Uh, all successes. Um, so, James. You've definitely heard uh, tall tales and, and rumors about, and uh, campfire stories about men coming back from the grave to exact revenge. Mm -hmm. um, but you've never seen anything to indicate this was anything other than just stories men tell to scare one another in mm -hmm. the darkness. Uh, Rosaline, from your work trying to decode Hoyle's Book of Games and uh, some of the other things that doing that has led you to read and, and discover, you definitely know that Hoyle was trying to figure out uh, how to do that. Other people have been trying to figure out how to bring people back from the dead. That is, uh, immortality has always been something that uh, people of the magical persuasion have sought out in one form or another. But as far as you are aware, no one was ever successful in doing that. Now, you've heard rumors as well of people coming back from the dead in stories, but with your magical knowledge, you're, you're not, you don't remember reading anything that would indicate that someone could do that. Tortla, your, your tribe and the stories that passed down also speak of people returning from uh, the spirit realm. But while it's, it's always hard to know in, in the legends and stories of your people what is meant to be taken as an absolute truth and what is presented as a truth in order to present a deeper truth. So again, it's hard for you to know for sure if those stories are true or, or merely stories meant to teach and guide. Okay. Um, so all of you have definitely heard about that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but never encountered it or spoken with anyone who has encountered it. We did just deal with three ghosts. It could be Holbrook's ghost. You dealt, oh, sorry, you dealt with what now? Yeah, also there's that, the ghost oh. that you dealt with. So yeah, that's their point for the ghosts. Something really <laughs> crazy that, I mean, we've come upon crazy, but this was, this took it to a whole new level. So there is that, I suppose. But, but even they were not, not revived corpses. At best, no. they, they were impressions. They, they were spirits that were there to, to kill us. back after what had happened to them. The idea of someone actually coming back to life and using, uh, having enough actual agency and physicality to raise another gang up, it, it's ridiculous. Nothing. Why is everyone looking at me? Nothing. We're just changed. on a boat now. It's okay. <laughs> you guys hear a, a strange sound coming from outside. Wait. It seems to be getting closer. Did y'all hear that? Yes. yes. I'm going to draw uh, Mary, my knife, Mary. It doesn't sound that close. It's just it getting matter. louder. You're drawing Mary? Okay. I mean, no one's around, All right? right. So. No. I'm sure it's just another mad scientist and some crazy. It seems to be coming from the air above you all. Oh no. Well, the only mad scientist I know of around here doesn't like us very much. So, doesn't like you very much. I think we have a I good relationship. Out. You walk outside? Yeah. Um, it's surprisingly dark out here, as though uh, things have gotten a bit cloudy. And looking down into the town, you see uh, a, a large crowd of people that all seem to be milling about in the middle of town and shielding their eyes to look up into the sky above cold water. And following their gaze, you look up and see what is actually blotting out the sun is not in fact a cloud as you had first assumed, but appears to be some sort of mechanical floating monstrosity. It looks like a giant uh, balloon 
that uh, ha has been affixed with propellers and has some sort of like carriage underneath it that is actually floating above Coldwater Creek and as you watch, continues to move above Coldwater Creek and then all of a sudden you hear this rhythmic mechanical clanking as the propellers change their positioning and slowly start lowering this behemoth down to touch ground on the road outside of town. James, what is it? Uh, I go outside. Can we, is it safe? I, I think so. I mean, uh, I, I haven't seen anything this large before with well, it seems uh, perhaps a little presumptuous to say that it is safe then. From up here on the hill, you can actually see Marshal Hurlis come bursting out of the Marshal's office with his shotgun and his deputies in tow. And they come walking, stalking down the, the main streets, trying to like calm people. But you can see that Hurlis is a bit odd as he comes creeping down Main Street with his, with his gun out. Okay, Rosaline's curiosity is going to take over and she's going to go outside and figure out what this is. Okay, so yeah, you, you can all see this thing. Yeah, I, I'll approach my hand on my on the butt of my gun. Okay, so you guys are gonna head down the, the hill towards yeah. the, yeah. Towards the road? Yeah. I think we should get something of a closer look. Mm -hmm. None of us have ever seen anything like this before. Nope. <laughs> I would imagine in the army, I might have seen like scouting balloons of some. You guys, you probably not, saw scouting balloons. But not like propellers. And some of you have maybe even seen an auto gyro or yes. heard stories about auto gyros. Uh, like the, the one or two men flying devices that use rotating blades to, to fly around. but. Nothing like this. You've never seen anything like this. This looks like some sort of bizarre mixture yeah. of a giant scouting balloon and an auto gyro. Yeah. Um, it is now uh, coming to a rest on the, the ground outside of Coldwater Creek, and a huge cloud of dust comes up around it as it settles its immense bulk into position. It seems like we might be the best to meet it, right? Well, I, I certainly don't want other people making the first impression. Yeah, I agree. Let's go over there. OK, um, so, so as you watch, the, the townsfolk Though they seem very fearful and a bit, uh, you know, cautious, they're all sort of edging and murmuring their way closer to it. And you see Marshal Hurlis and his deputies standing at the front, kind of trying half-heartedly to keep the townsfolk back while they keep an eye on, on this thing that has just landed on the road outside of town with their, with their guns at the ready. Um, as you watch the propellers start to wind down and uh, finally come to a, a complete stop and there is just silence out in the street and then a doorway rises up at the front of the undercarriage bit of this gigantic thing and uh, rolls itself up and and as you are standing there watching a platform kind of runs out from the doorway leading down towards the ground like a ramp that is extending out from this machine um, and stepping out of that doorway uh, comes a, a tall man dressed in the fashion of uh, back east with a trim goatee wearing a enormously tall top hat. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks down this ramp smiling with his arms held wide uh, addressing the uh, assembled people of Coldwater Creek he, paying no mind to Marshal Hurlis and his deputies who have guns trained on him and are sweating with their fingers near the trigger. And he says, hello, people of Coldwater Creek. I am here. He pauses for applause. <laughs> nobody nobody uh, does anything. You guys are still a little bit We're far away to, uh, to address All him right. directly. And he says, and I bring you great tidings. I have brought back to you your native son. The one man who is in charge of making this town prosperous and the great, growing, bustling town that it now is, I bring back to you, Mr. Carlton Harris. And he takes a bow um, and a portly man uh, dressed in sort of a rough spun suit with a uh, trim and grain Van Dyke comes walking down the gangplank and just sort of stands there looking at everyone. And the people of Coldwater Creek sort of look at each other and there's a small smattering of applause. And you see the, the man in the hat kind of look up confused and he, he turns back to uh, Harris and he says, I'm sorry, I assumed there would be more applause. <laughs> and Harris says, now doctor, I told you all of this is unnecessary. Yes, hello, I have returned. All of you, please go back about your business. Pay this man no mind. Uh, and just starts walking down the gangplank as everyone in town just sort of like looks at him and moves out of the way. 
as he goes, yes, hello, oh. it is me. Can we get over there? Um, you can start moving over that way I for sure. To do this yeah. thing. All right, so you guys start moving over there through the crowd while the, the tall stranger in the outlandish hat stands on, on the ramp, just looking kind of confused uh, down there. And uh, as you watch, Harris start to sort of, he's got a cane that he walks with that looks more like an affectation than anything that he needs. Starts walking through the parting crowd. Uh, you see Zachary Driscoll come, come running up from, from down the street, tucking his shirt tails in and making sure his ascot is well adjusted. And um, greeting uh, Mr. Harris, you're still a bit too far away and still trying to make your way through the crowd to hear exactly what it is he's saying. And then motioning excitedly for Harris to come with him and they, they kind of turn and go back down the street in the, off towards Harris Mining Company. And uh, the tall stranger watches them go for a moment and then just sort of uh, looks at the assembled crowd and says, uh, well, no matter. Everyone, my name is Dr. James Victor Milovciento Setentayuna. But I am known to my friends as Doc James V. What the what? Wait. And I am, here, I am here to bring you wonders beyond your imagination. Yes, I am here in my flying air carriage, Felicia's Grace, to bring you the good people of Coldwater Creek, your Smith and Robards catalogs. We know and from is. out of his uh, jacket, he produces uh, a handful of Smith and Robards catalogs that he fans out in his hands. Uh, these are the newest and latest edition, you can tell, because they have color images on the front of them. And you hear wow. the assembled crowd kind of, ooh and ah. He says, yes, indeed. The very same Smith and Robards, those pioneers of the technological arts, here to offer you any number of... Uh, wondrous mechanical devices to aid in your everyday life. Whatever your need may be, Smith and Robards can attend to it. A mere five dollars per catalog gets you the world at your fingertips. Please, step right up here and I will give you one or more for your friends. And people just start like bustling and jostling their way up into to line, to line up uh, at, at the, uh, the ramp and kind of pay the money to get their catalog. Uh, does anyone want a Smith & Robards catalog? I kind of want a catalog. I mean, you guys know Smith & Robards sells some really cool stuff. And uh, it's not always easy to get their catalogs. They don't have a whole lot of shipping offices. Uh, and it's hard to send away for it. And the mail is notoriously unreliable. So unless you're in Salt Lake City, this is really the only way <laughs> that you can easily send away for some Smith & Robards isn't that where I got my vocal unction from? It I is know. where you got your vocal unction. I like elixir. that vocal unction. It worked out pretty well for you. <laughs> is this I mean, the uh, is this the Christmas catalog? Uh, is this the Christmas catalog? Yeah, it well, is not. Oh. It is uh, it is the 1880 catalog, even yeah. though it's 1879. This is the next oh. this is next year's catalog. It's like how they put out like the 2018 Prius. It is exactly like that. <laughs> um, and uh, James, you know, uh, you've heard that uh, those grease lightning pills that they sell can really give a, a gunfighter the edge. I've uh, heard that, yes. Yeah, although I don't need one. <laughs> every, every now and then they, they give you a case of the slows. Um, <laughs> there's all manner of wondrous mechanical, mundane, combat ready, vehicular. Uh, manslaughter. I'm sorry. <laughs> Possibly. Say vehicular and I think vehicular manslaughter. Any wonder of magical things can come out of your very own copy of the Smith and Robarts catalog. Oh my god. Oh. So would, would anyone like to join the line and pay their five dollars to get their copy of the latest hot off the presses edition of the Smith and Robarts catalog? Well it seems like we should, right? At least one. Uh, is Presley anywhere in the Cooler in money. the crowd? You do not see Presley anywhere around. Damn it! I'm sure would love to pay someone else to stand in line for me. <laughs> <laughs> the line's moving pretty quickly. People are 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 walking up and handing over their cash, and and he Doc James V is handing over these catalogs to the assembled I crowd. I'd be happy to stand in this line. All right, I, I admit I'm pretty curious as to what they might be selling. Could be really useful. Yeah, I mean, last year's catalog was pretty exciting. From what you heard, you didn't get a chance to peruse. So, I mean, this opportunity doesn't come along all the time. I mean, it's not every day you see pictures in color. Right, it's a Smith & Robards catalog, too. Hold on, there's the actual catalog cover in here. There we go. Wondrous, in Ooh. wondrous inventions. Ooh. fancy. Color. There's a lady. I believe it says, now with full color photo stats. Ooh. <laughs> So, um, who is going to buy a copy of the Smith & Robards catalog? One for you, copy. miss. Uh, for you, good sir. This well, is not James V. This is not Doc James V. talking. This is just me, Jordan Caves Callerman, the marshal, wearing wait, a giant. Do we hat. all have to? Can we buy one and share it? You could if you're lame. 
I kind of <laughs> want one. <laughs> I mean, but then you have to wait your turn to peruse the many wondrous things that can be found within the pages of the Smith and Robards catalog, 1880 edition. <laughs> you are hard selling. You don't want to. You don't want to have to wait. On. You want to read it right is, away. Is Smith and Robards paying you for this? Get, yeah. your, get your greasy mitts on these. <laughs> Come on, you all need one. You can't wait your turn. What if they turn the page when you're trying to read about something and you forget what page it's on? Oh, I, I, I can't say no to that. <laughs> I'm real confused right now. Yeah. <laughs> these are all the, the <gasps> snatches of conversation you hear Doc James V <laughs> engage in. No, I want to buy one from him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's going to sell you one. Okay, that's but Are you what the I'm only one for. who wants to buy a copy of the Smith & Robards catalog? I thought we were going to share it. Yeah. Uh, well, I thought we were going to pool our money. Well, 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 why don't you pick up two while you're there? All I right. think the church funds can cover it. Quite. They, they definitely can. <laughs> the church funds. The church, <laughs> well, the church I mean, needs two. You could definitely outfit the church with any any manner of wondrous uh, home upkeep and, and mm -hmm. repair devices. That Anti-snake you could snake, uh, devices. Anti-snake <laughs> devices. They have them by the bushel. That would be rather useful, wouldn't yeah. it? We've had snake problems. <laughs> <laughs> James Bow, uh, would you like to buy a copy as well? <laughs> Sure. Five dollars okay. for each of you. Stand up yeah. in line, and as you. So I need three. Did you want one? Um, no. All right. So you know for three. a fact, Tordlot doesn't want one. <laughs> three. Her old ways oath would pretty much preclude her from making yeah. use of most, if not all, Just of these things. Thought I would check. So as right. you as you step up the gangplank, I'll um, pay for these. He says, "Oh, a lovely day too, miss. Or would you like a copy of the Smith and Robards catalog? Well, actually, I would like. I have four hundred and twenty-one. Like well, now three I have copies, all for yourself. Four hundred and sixteen dollars. Well, I'm going to share them with some friends of mine. Oh, fantastic! I a very giving, charitable soul. I'll be up there with her, but I'm like trying to like peek inside and like poke things, like, like if it's like. So soft, he's I'm he's blocking it. the uh, the ramp up there, and now that you're closer to it, you can see that the bottom of the balloon is a good 15 feet above the ground. The carriage, uh, the undercarriage itself, is taller than it looked when it was up in the air. Um, so you can't reach the balloon uh, okay. from here. I'm poking whatever I can reach. Okay. This is quite an amazing contraption. I've never seen anything like it before. She's Thank being you. very like sweet and small. and overly flirty and all of that. Kind okay. Of stuff. Uh, make a persuade roll for me. Okay. And don't forget to modify it by your uh, attractive edge. My char the charisma. 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 Wait, and what then am I'm I doing? also saying Persuade. things like "doesn't fly as well as an owl." <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're over there completely alone. Like Woo! no one is paying any attention to you, nice. and you're Stop. just demeaning this thing. Okay. Uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Well, when they told me that I was going to be flying to Coldwater Creek, no one told me I would be meeting the most lovely woman in this town. Oh, you're, you're, stop it. You're such a, a flatterer. It is my pleasure. And he takes your, your hand and, and kisses it very lightly as he bows before you. Now, it was three copies, you said. Oh, yes, that would be lovely. Three. Well, listen, you didn't hear this from me, but maybe you could pay for two, and a third might find itself sandwiched in between them by mistake. <laughs> you're so kind. You don't have to do that for me. Oh, Thank you so much. Say nothing of it. So he takes the $10 from you and slides you three Smith & Robards catalogs. So, uh, guys, um, well, well, we'll let him. So everyone, everyone grabs their, their catalogs, and everyone starts excitedly perusing them. Ooh. And he once again addresses the, the gathered crowd and says, Yes, now ordinarily you would have to be in Salt Lake City or send away through the postal service, notoriously unreliable, in order to get your Smith & Robards products. Right. Now we make every effort to make sure they get to you intact in one piece. But... You, the people of Coldwater Creek, are very fortunate. You are very fortunate because I, Doc James V, am here with my flying air carriage, Felicia's Grace, to relay your orders all the way back to Denver, to the shipping center there, to send away to Salt Lake City for all of the wonderful things that you choose to purchase and make sure they are shipped here and then brought via the air carriage back here to Coldwater Creek having the time of delivery, and making sure that you get everything you order with only a slight margin of error. So does that mean you're... you're now, that may sound like a, uh, a, a humorous disclaimer, but it is notoriously difficult to get anything that you want delivered to you. <laughs> like, that is just, just non-Smith & Robards uh, products. Getting mail is a miracle. <laughs> the fact the fact that someone could actually ship the mail via postal service, considering there are many postal services that are all competing depending on what part of the nation you are in. Yeah, uh, they're going like between technically warring countries. Right. Or... Um, 
and avoiding all of the bandits and uh, strange creatures that can be found out here in the West. Uh, it, is, it is a goddamn miracle if you ever get your mail. Uh, Smith and Robards does guarantee, up to a certain extent, uh, that you will get things by, in a certain condition, but even they cannot 100% guarantee that you will get what you want and that it will be the thing that you ordered and that it will be on time and all in one piece and still functioning. So this is quite an offer. What does that mean you'll And Chad unlocked that. In town? Quite a bit then. Uh, yes. I will be uh, residing here inside of Felicia's Grace, outside of town, awaiting the orders of all of the fine townsfolk. In fact, I will be staying for one week's time. You have one week to peruse your catalogs, place your orders, and deliver them to me. And then I will deliver them back to Smith and Robards. Well, then I'll be seeing you again, I suppose. Oh, I very much hope so. Me too. So... Until such a time as you are ready to place your orders, fine people of Coldwater Creek, you know where to find me. I am not hard to find. I will be here inside of Felicia's Grace, where I live and work. It is truly a marvel of modern science and just one of the many, many things that Smith and Robards is capable of. We hope to enrich your life as you have so enriched mine on this day. Thank you very much. And everyone is just like swept up and they're all just clapped. They're like, yeah, I think he, he likes us. This is much better than the part where he brought that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and everyone excitedly kind of goes off uh, to the nearest place, their home, uh, a saloon or something to sit down and flip through their catalog. As Can the next hour and a half of this inside. session be us just flipping through Smith and Robards? Yeah. It definitely could be, Ready. but it won't be. It oh. won't be. Uh, you guys will have to look at that in between exactly. sessions. So you can't place your orders now, <laughs> uh, but you'll be able to place your orders later. All right. And you could even, if you wanted to, maybe post some of the things you're thinking <gasps> about uh, on your character Twitter Ooh. things. And Enclosed wagon. <laughs> yes. Enclosed wagon. But make sure you check out those price points. They're a doozy. Oh, God. <laughs> 3,500? <laughs> Whatever. Maybe you need to up your uh, tithing. Yeah. yeah. We need more money. I will give up two edges <laughs> so that I can get an enclosed wagon. No. Wow. <laughs> All right. So as you guys are, are excitedly getting your, your uh, catalogs and you see Tort Law kind of over by, the, by Felicia's Grace sort of kicking it solidly. I've stabbed it with my knife a few times. You have made no dent in I've... the uh, hardened ghost steel alloy of, of Felicia's Grace. That is um, the story tier on the wings of Felicia's Grace that Chad unlocked to make sure that anything you order has a much higher chance, not a perfect chance, but a much higher chance of getting to you uh, nice. how you want it to. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Very... I wish there was someone specific in chat we could also oh, right? point out, but there's not. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> not a one. That's not referencing anyone we know. Nope. No. Rosaline, will you make a notice roll for me, please? Yes, I will. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Spaghetti. Uh -oh. Let me make sure I'm right. I was right. referencing the J.C. Penney Christmas catalog, which is Ooh. what I was always waiting for mm -hmm. when I was a kid. It's, no. Oh, it's right. better than that. Yeah. The Wells Fargo the wagon is, is a coming down, down, down the street. Please let it... Did you clip that? <laughs> did you clip that? I got this. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you roll for your notice roll, Rosalie? Uh, seven. Um, so as, as everyone's flipping through their catalogs and kind of dispersing, you see uh, a little bit of activity <laughs> happening at the edge of the crowd that is breaking up. Um, and, and someone that appears to be trying to catch your eye. It's uh, Doc Hollingsbeck. Now, you both met Doc Hollingsbeck for the first time at the end of last season, and at that time, Rosaline, you played an adventure card that turned Doc Hollingsbeck into a love interest of yours. <laughs> he mean, fell in love with you did. because you played that card. Yeah. Um, it's like Stardew Valley. Yeah, he put, yeah. His, he put his glasses on and realized who he was dealing with <laughs> and was instantly smitten. Uh, however, he also revealed in that conversation that he was a married man. Yeah. Um, but uh, what in the intervening time has been the nature of your relationship with Doc Hollingsbeck? Now, you ply a certain trade among town. Um, and Doc Hollingsbeck uh, would certainly be someone who would uh, be a willing customer uh, and, and has also been uh, keeping an eye out for any uh, strange or mysterious snake bites as you two requested him to let you know if uh, he has not let you know about that. None oh, she would utilize that relationship. I mean, that's a way to make money. That's her way of making money. So, yeah, she, she what, would. What do you do? You know, <laughs> adult stuff. <laughs> Adult stuff, James. Oh. Uh, so he comes <laughs> hurrying up, up to you, and he looks uh, very pale and, and, and shaking a bit. And he says, uh, Rosalie, uh, uh, Miss Byrne, I, uh, uh, I, I wonder if I could have a moment to speak with you and uh, your, your associates, uh, perhaps you want somewhere everyone. private. 
Sure. What's his first name? Lark. Lark? Yeah. Okay. Doc. Lark. Doc. Yeah. Most people call him Doc. Lark. Uh, of uh, uh, Doc. Uh, please, doc Doctor. Of Doctor Hollingsbeck. Of uh, course. Uh, yes, could you just, why don't you meet us at the church? Uh, uh, very well. Uh, uh, sh sh shall I head on ahead? Head on over there. I'll grab everyone else. Okay, so he, he just sort of goes um, rushing up the hill to the church, and you see him go through the doors. So that the doctor just came over and wants to speak with everyone. Well, I sent him to the church. I don't know exactly what it is that he wants, but he didn't look so good. Well, if he's a client of yours, are you sure he wants me there as we discuss it? Well, it seems quite unusual, but yes, he asked for everyone. Well, all right. Stupid fake owl. That's all this is. What? Oh, oh, you're talking about the Torla terrible. is still <laughs> over by uh, Felicia's grace, I imagine. Tartla, will you come with us? We need to go back to the church. Just I, staring I, hatefully at it, I assume. Yeah. I just put I go, my armor on Torla and just... We'll have to follow up with We all like owls woods, better, woods. right? We all like owls. Yes, of course, Torla. Better. Yeah. We all yeah. hate that thing. Yeah, we do. I don't know why I went into Owen Wilson right there. Like, yeah, we yeah. told yeah. 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 yeah, we hate it. Wow. 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 Whole yeah. How much would wow. Sean have to donate wow. to get us all to be Owen wow. Wilson? Wow. 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 not do Owen Wilson. Wow. 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 Yeah, anyway, so yes. <laughs> that flies in the sky. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, everyone everyone totally hates this thing. Fuck this thing. Owls are great. Um, <laughs> yeah. As we walk to the church, I continue to say that. Like, I mutter it for a while. Owls are better than that thing. And then occasionally I'm like, we all agree owls are better, right? Taught, none of us have particularly strong feelings about owls. <laughs> no, we love them, right? We all love uh, owls. <laughs> just, I think we should just say yes. Yes, we, stupid. we all like Number owls. Number one owl fan. <laughs> That's right. Actually, my favorite animal is a wolf. James, Both. James, Shut the fuck up. This is not the right time. I agree with okay. Gabe on this one. All right. So you guys slowly and eventually make it up the hill to the church, and uh, the the doc is sitting on the the steps up to the the pulpit, just watching the door. And as you come in, he stands up again and says, um, uh, "Were you? Is there anyone else about?" As far as I know, the you, church is uh, empty. Besides, you want us. me to do a circuit? If you agree that owls are better than that thing that came to town, I'll just, go check it out. Just no, I just agree. Not Fine. Right, yes. Yeah, no, owls are a valuable part of we the ecosystem. What is it? I will cir I'll circle. So uh, just make a notice check for me. Sweet, sweet, sweet notice. I don't know why I'm singing like that. Sing the notice song. The and notice, make a notice song. Song. Sweet, sweet. Damn it. A that one and a two. Really don't ruined my ability so to notice. Uh, it's the song. <laughs> it makes you too loud. I'm gonna re-roll. You're gonna re-roll? Yeah. It's the song. The song wrote it. Do a six. Mother! It's a one and a two again, actually. That's, That's the same roll. That's the same roll. Hard to do. I okay, so I go to do a circuit, but the whole time I'm like, everyone, they all they're all lying to me. They all don't, they all like that thing. They all don't like owls. So, so everyone watches you do a circuit um, as you mutter to yourself and <laughs> look at the ground and like you know just seem very distracted. I don't think she's looking very well. And then you you come back. Nothing was out there. It was fine. There's no one. Oh, uh, all right. We all like owls. We well, like owls. Yeah. Yes. I, okay. I believe I made my position clear on the subject. All um, right. What is it? You look like something's wrong. Well, now listen. I. I ain't supposed to be talking to anybody about this, you understand? Like, I, I am uh, breaking a, a promise that I made in order to buy my secrecy, but I saw something last night that, uh, well, it just doesn't sit right with me, and I can't rightly explain it. So there's a, uh, and I thank you to keep this, under your hats as well. Carse, you know we will. There's a bit of a sickness in town. What sort of sickness? Uh, well, uh, nothing that I have encountered before, but it is a, uh, a f fever, starts as a fever, and uh, causes a certain amount of fatigue. At first I assumed people were just uh, catching influenza or something like, which can be serious, but if caught early enough and if you keep them 
isolated and make sure they get plenty of rest and fluids. And most of the time, anyone with a strong constitution can shake it off. But uh, this seemed to be a particularly virulent and uh, started to progress among some of the people that had caught it in ways that I uh, didn't anticipate uh, caused their, their fever to greatly worsen so much so that for some of them, the unfortunate ones who were not able to shake it off, uh, it almost seemed to boil their brains a bit. Now, now they're alive, but they ain't the same, if you catch my meaning. Right. They're, uh, they, they're touched Is now. someone trying to keep you from telling people about this? Well, I... I don't want to cause a panic in town. Of and, course. Uh, it's, That's good thinking, Doctor. It is. It has been made clear to me that I am to try and treat these patients to the best of my ability and make sure that uh, not too many people catch wind of this so that there is not a public outcry. But last night, I was attending to uh, one of the patients who has the m most advanced form of whatever this sickness is, and I, I was trying to uh, make them comfortable as they, they uh, tossed and turned with the fever, and uh, then their fever started spiking something horrible. It kept getting hotter and hotter, and they started screaming right there in my office, and, uh, and he, he kind of sits back down again at this, and I, I swear to you, this will sound crazy, but it is the God's honest truth, and I swear it on the church that we're all sitting in. Cars? He caught flame, and before my eyes burned away to nothing but a pile of ash. Well, I, I say nothing. I, I, I confide in uh, the, uh, the undertaker in town. He and I work together sometimes on this. He has the remains, and I, I, I confess I, I was so upset that I, I, I rushed out. I, I wasn't in my right mind. It was uh, something <clears throat> very terrible to witness, but... The remains, I haven't had much of a chance to investigate. Something was left behind, apart from ash, and uh, uh, Barnabas has, has those, and, and you should definitely speak to him. But um, my hands are tied a bit in this situation. I am to continue on uh, doing the work that I've been instructed to do. What was the thing left behind? Uh, that I don't rightly know. As I said, I didn't get much opportunity to examine the remains. Well, I was uh, not in a mental state to do so. Doctor, why don't you take us to where this, uh, this conflagration started? Well, uh, that I can do. It happened in, in my office. And, and then, as I said, you should probably speak to Barnabas. He might have more information for you. Who but... is it that's keeping your... What do you mean your hands are tight? By well, who? Miss Byrne, can you think of uh, no one whose interest it would be in to make sure that there was not a public panic in the town of Coldwater I Creek can. at this time? Well, I can think of a few, to be honest. Like a marshally kind of person? Oh, Herless? No, he, no, he wouldn't know, know what to do. doesn't know how to do his own job. Harris? Harris is the one I'm wondering about. Uh, Harris wasn't even here. Well, well he came got... in that devil the, th owl. the thing that... Driscoll. Driscoll is here. The thing that you'll come to learn about I don't Carlton know Harris. Names anymore. Pardon? Go ahead. Well, I, I was saying that the thing you'll come to learn about Carlton Harris is just because he ain't here, don't mean he ain't here. Uh, he likes to keep abreast of all his business dealings, and he is very well informed. So, gotta be suspicious of someone rising around. I can take you to my office. Fake owl. I can't take you to Barnabas. I can't be seen. Uh, doing much at all with the four of you where this where this nature is regarded uh, but if you were to look into it I'd be much obliged uh, it might even help me uh, prevent more horrific loss of life curse we will why why us and not the marshal well as uh, your your friend here just just espoused uh, I, I laugh a little bit I'm like Bo, I think we all know the answer to that question. I want to hear it from him. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you insist, but I, I thought it's common knowledge, and with you being a deputy and all, of course, you, you know that our Herless is more bluster than anything else. I mean, any rule of law in this town is mostly people being afraid of uh, having to talk to him for too long of a period of time. 
<laughs> no one wants to get arrested because they don't want to spend the night getting jawed at by Hurlis in the jail cell. But you don't think Hurlis is working with Harris in, in any capacity? Well, of course Hurlis is working with Harris. Ain't a person in this town who doesn't have some ties to Harris Mining. This town exists because of Harris Mining. Now, if you're asking, do I think that Hurlis is a confidant of Harris's? No, I very much do I not. I doubt m many people are talking to Harris in that sense. No, thank you, sir. Uh, how many? Uh, how many are you treating? W well, uh, it's been going on for for quite some time. Uh, it started slow at first, uh, just a couple people coming in complaining of the fever, and I sent them on their way. But uh, it's been getting worse and worse as time has gone by. Basically, uh, ever since the town started booming, I've been seeing more and more cases of this uh, strange fever popping up. Now, most of the time, as I said, someone with a strong enough constitution can fight this off sure as they can influenza or some other sickness of the like. But on the ones that, that can't seem to shake it, don't have the, the fortitude or the, the strength of body, it, it hey. progresses in a disturbing manner. These people getting sick... Are they working in the mine? Uh, well, yeah, I, I believe most of them do, do work. But, I mean, most people in the town are affiliated with Harris Mining in some but way or like another. in the mine? Uh, I'd have to check my records, but I, I know okay. several of them are miners, yes. And well, you'd never seen this before anywhere else? Well, as I said, it's only recently in these people with the more advanced stages of this sickness that now I've heard of fevers uh, getting so high that people ain't the same afterwards. Uh, but this is this is different. This looks uh, like something I might classify more as a dementia of some kind. And and then of course, what I saw last night. Now that ain't something I've ever heard of. Now, doctor, are you at liberty to take us to the remains of this patient? Ooh, I. Cannot, but I, Barnabas knows to mm -hmm. to potentially we'll, be expecting We'll check you. in with the undertaker as well. But now I, I assume that you have many duties you must attend to with this. That I do. Uh, the town's been a flurry of medical activity lately, and, and you know the everyday annoyances that come with being a town doctor. Cars. Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Well, thank you very much, Ro uh Miss Byrne for uh, hearing me out. Of course, any time. And um, perhaps um, sometime in the next week or so, you should pay a visit for uh, physical. <laughs> Not really. What he said. <laughs> okay. Of course, I will. You know, I it's, like to come in and. It's important okay. to make we'll sure see you later. that everyone's uh, uh, right. It, yeah, and, and of course, the offer is extended to any of you. Uh, oh, that's all right. Thank preemptive you. Uh, preemptive good, health, health good care wonderful. is an important. Yeah, yep. uh, I'll be on my way. Yep. Yep. Yes, yes. And he uh, <laughs> walks out the door. <laughs> well, town. I admit, I admit what we've heard is disturbing, but I was worried he was going to say he had the clap. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Quite much more careful than that, though. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so I suppose we sh this sounds a bit like what we ran into before with those miners, right? I don't know. They didn't catch a fire. A little, mm. but it's different. But it seems similar, right? Well, uh, I don't think we can count on anything being similar at this point. Everything about this seems have, bizarre. Have we seen like the the exploding miners? Like nothing like that has happened since. Uh, not, that, not that you've heard of, okay. but you do know that there have been several rumors around town that miners have gone missing. Miners continue to go missing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an entirely unheard of thing when you're exploring and continuing to dig down in the darkness. People get lost. There's cave-ins up, uh, you know, out around in the mountains. Like, sometimes claim holders go, go missing as well. Now, mm -hmm. my experience seeing Presley and the children last time, did they seem sick like this? Does this seem to mm. like connect what's going on or did they just seem tired? They did not bad? seem physically sick to you. Okay. They seemed they seemed tired and fatigued, uh -huh. but they, uh, thinking back on it, you more think of them as uh, being distracted. Like haggard. Haggard, but like, like their minds were elsewhere. Right. Like they were thinking of something else. Okay. Well, we, let's go to the... Yes, it seems like we should go and talk to the Undertaker. Yeah. Right? Yep. I guess so. I assume I would actually have at least something of a relationship with this person. Uh, you got, With the Undertaker? Yeah. Sure. You guys have all... We've, 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 we've talked to Barnabas yeah. before. 
Uh, he's not someone that anyone really like wants to spend a lot of time around. Sure, but I've an probably had to manage at least a few funerals. Uh, you have, yeah. So Barnabas, you know, has you, you're familiar with. Although him. I, I also kind of imagine it's the sort of thing that, for the most part, people <clears throat> handle on their own. Um, sure. And if you have a little more like means and that kind of thing, you you, you have, often like, have had to uh, preside, like perform your best recollection of funeral services, but it's always been, you know, as the casket is being lowered into the earth. Sure. You've never had to perform so visceral a funeral service as you did for well, Charlie yeah, Shadow's for sure. uh, family members. So you guys are heading into uh, The Undertakers? Yeah. Yep. Should we yes. all go in? I mean, I guess there's no reason why we shouldn't. No, so I don't see why not. All right. Is we, are we going to pass my new enemy? Uh, I mean, it's outside of town. It's pretty so hard. So it's on the road outside of town. But you're definitely going to see it. it. You're definitely going to see totally it. totally am cursing it. Okay. In like Native American square words. The whole way, just under so your many. breath. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's a mental image I can definitely understand. <laughs> uh, so as you as you walk your way down there, to uh, Tort Law holding back a little bit and maybe kicking at the dirt from time to time as uh, as she continues to mutter under her breath. Let it out, Tort. Let it out. You, uh, you make your way to the Undertaker's office and uh, Barnabas has the door open and is peering out as you come up. Ah, welcome, welcome. Uh, yes, I, I, I knew to be expecting you. Oh God, I forgot about this guy. Uh, uh, please, yes, please, uh, come, come right inside off the street. Oh, thank you for that. It's very kind of you. I'll just close the door as we discuss uh, those uh, funerary arrangements that we were going to discuss, preacher of and course, friends. Barnabas. Yes, of course. Right. So I will uh, right. I will close the door now as we discuss business. Barnabas. He shouts out to the empty street. There's no one out there. Barnabas, well. perhaps when we are at, at less of a, 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 a dire situation, I can give you some tips on seeming inconspicuous when you are trying to uh, uh, not draw attention to yourself. He closes the door behind him. You prefer owls to fake owls, right? Uh, actually, I, I love a great taxidermied owl. Uh, it's great to see the wingspan of a creature like that inside. Uh, and, and in fact, I've been thinking of uh, going down to the assay office and purchasing one of uh, one of his amateur taxidermied owls. There's one that's caught my eye. Uh, and uh, yes, yes, I, I, I agree. We can never be too careful when it comes to matters, uh, cloak and dagger type things like this. Yes. So it, it seems that you were, you were expecting us. Yes, I was. Uh, Doc Hollingsbeck said that you might be along. He was going to try and speak with you and see if you might be able to look into uh, something rather strange that has come across uh, my doorway that he brought to me. Uh, he seems a little bit excited about it, too. Well, I... show us, then. Uh, oh, yes, yes, uh, right this way. He just kind of peeks out the, the front window, looks through the pane, and just kind of raps on it and says, Yes! We'll go back and look at the bodies now. Barnabas. That the preacher is here to, to see. And he closes the, the curtain. And he hears you say his name. He turns to you and gives you a wink. Touch of the nose. Right back here into the, uh, into the parlor. He <sighs> ushers you all into his back room where uh, once again you see his, his table. And there is another sheet draped atop it. But this time the sheet seems to be over a bucket. What looks like a bucket underneath the sheet. Here. What, what is this here? May oh, I? These are the remains. Now, uh, before you do, uh, did the doctor prepare you for what it is you might be seeing? Uh, he told us a little bit about nope. the uh, spontaneous combustion that seems to have occurred. Yes, yes, yes. That's, a, that's an interesting <coughs> term for it. Yes, and spontaneously combusted. I, I might good. use that. I might use that. Uh, well, um, yes. Uh, here we are, the, the remains of the unfortunate patient. And he whisks the sheet away, and it is indeed a bucket. And inside of the bucket is a, a lot of what looks like just gray ash. And on top of it is a, about a fist-sized shape of uh, what looks like a dark rock. This is all that is left of the unfortunate man who, as you said, spontaneously combusted. Do we know who this man was? Uh, I, I, uh, the doc might have that information. He, uh, he brought the remains to me in, in quite a state. Well, I say brought the remains, brought news of the remains, and had me go into his office and uh, collect them into my trusty bucket, uh, as you see. Mm -hmm. This rock, does it look like a rock rock, or is it like shaped like anything? Uh, so does anyone else want to take a closer look at the rock? Yeah, yeah I, I'd like to. Okay, so everyone, everyone make a... Everyone make a 
knowledge roll. Common knowledge. So just make a smarts roll while you look at the rock. Oh, God. A one and a two. Again. I, these dice are being retired. Bad dice. I got a five. You got a five? Is there, is there a modifier? Not for this. I also got a five. You also got a five? I've got a one and a two. A one and a two. It's popular. It's going around. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you two look at it, and um, it's a bit hard from your vantage point. It's all covered in like this weird ash. It just looks like a weird fish-shaped lump of black rock. Um, but from the other side of the table, where Gabe and Rosaline are are looking at it, there are clearer patches where the ash has not covered it up so much, and you see familiar white streaks and specks in it. Uh, as far as you can tell, this looks like a fist-sized lump of ghost rock. That's a very large piece of ghost rock. I right? want to believe that this was inside the person's body. Isn't it? That is what I suspected as well. It also, it does look very much like ghost rock. Now, I haven't had the chance to analyze it, and also, I don't know how, but <laughs> <laughs> that was my suspicion as well. I'm glad to see well, it affirmed. How big is it? Fist size. Fist size. Without bringing about too the size many of a outside, human heart. Right. Without bringing too many outsiders into this uh, uh, investigation, shall we call it, there might be a man who is in town who has some knowledge of Ghost Rock at the moment. Ah, you're referring to uh, Prof. Brown, our yes. resident uh, mad scientist. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, new scientist, as he, as he prefers. We yes. don't have uh, the best relationship with him, but if anyone would know about Ghost Rock, he would probably be the man. Well, that, that, that is a good point, Preacher. Um, Bogue, will you make an agility roll for me real quick? Whoa. Yes. At I'm... a minus two. Whoa. Yes, six. Gout. Uh, it's 11, nine. Nine. Okay, so as you're talking, you feel something shift at your hip, uh, and, and you look down just in time to catch your gun f about to fall out of uh, its holster onto the ground, and you catch it in time and, and reholster it. Uh, careful, uh, Mr. Bogue, please don't go uh, shooting off any bullets inside of here. It's an enclosed room. It would be very loud, and it could potentially damage any one of our hearings. I, uh, our hearing could damage any of our hearing singular. I put the strap back on. No, the... Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> now, I, I'm sorry, Preacher. You were saying. I was saying that even though uh, uh, I have not had all the best encounters with the man, uh, uh, if we were to analyze this ghost rock and see what properties it might have com uh, related to these poor sick people, hmm. maybe Doc Brown is the man to go to. Uh, Prof. Brown. Prof. Brown. He's a professor, as he is uh, of will course. be keen to remind you. I'm sorry, uh, uh, we just talked with Doc Hollingsbeck. Doc Hollingsbeck. Hollingsbeck. Prof. Prof. Brown. It gets very confusing. Common misconception. Did the doctor mention anything about Ghost Rock with the rest of the folks that who are sick, right? He's got more... He didn't. I, I believe he said uh, some of them were miners. Uh, perhaps they worked in the Ghost Rock mines, but I, I don't believe he said anything else about Ghost Rock. Tort, where do you keep your tomahawk? Uh, at my side. Will you make an agility roll at a minus know. two for me? Of course, make an agility roll at a minus two. I have my hand on the button. <laughs> Four, minus two, no. Okay, so as you're kind of... Uh, craning over to take another look at the remains, you, you hear a snap, the snap of leather, and you feel a sudden lightness at your hip, as, uh, and you look down just in time to see your tomahawk uh, plummeting towards your foot. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh God, God, that's a six. Ten, uh, it, it falls blade down onto, onto your foot and cuts through your boot. What's your toughness? Uh, my toughness is five. Five? Okay, so uh, that is a success with a raise. Uh, so you would be shaken and wounded by by this. <laughs> Ow! Tor, what the hell? Oh what my goodness, what? Ow. So you guys oh just, God. all of a sudden, oh. Tortlaw just starts crying it out. It was the owl! James, what? you were right next to her, uh, so you saw just, just moments before that, her tomahawk just fall off her belt and onto her foot. Oh my goodness, oh. are you all right? I am not all right. Oh, I care. let me get a towel for I the, for the, hold light. on, hold on, uh, should I fetch the doctor? Yes, uh, yes, actually, I think maybe that would uh, be all right. Uh, right? Uh, stay oh. right here, uh, don't, don't interfere with the remains, I'll be right back, oh. I have to go fetch uh, Doc Hollingsbeck. Was he heading towards his office? I'm sorry, I, I'll do it as quick as I can. Yes, I assume so, I, I'm not sure. All right, going to deal with the other, uh, Afflicted. Uh, of course, of course. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, please, right. again, don't touch anything. Be right back. Of and he goes uh, rushing, rushing. What happened? Door. What Ow. happened? What? Ow. So you have a wound and you're shaken. I draw my gun. Okay. 
<laughs> what, why, why, did you see something? Now my gun apparently came unholstered with, with no provocation. So something is going on in here. Well, all let's right. all just try not to shoot ourselves for a moment. Uh, That's why you don't like guns. I, I, wanna, I wanna reach down and pick up the ghost rock. Okay, so you reach down and pick up the ghost rock? Uh -huh. Gabe, be careful. You don't okay. know what's... It's okay, it's just a rock. Well, is it though? This man lit on fire. Um, so, Tortla, yeah. um, as you are sitting there in a lot of pain, does it occur to you that you can take care of uh, this? Okay, would you? is that something you would like to do, or do you want to wait for the doctor? I'm waiting for the doctor. All right, you're in a fair amount of foot pain, though, as this, as this is happening. I'm, uh, my thought is that I don't want other people to know. Sure, sure. Because then they'll yeah. all be like, um, oh, heal us, and I'll be like, bitch, please. Right. Okay, so you're you're gonna kind of stick it out and wait for it. Okay. Uh huh. Um. So you pick up the ghost rock. Mm -hmm. It feels like a rock, a dusty, ashy rock, in your hand. It's heavy. It doesn't seem like a strange shape or anything to it. It's, it's just, just kind of a... like an irregular lump of fist-sized mm -hmm. ghost rock. Does anything seem wrong with it? I don't know. I can't see how this could have been inside someone's body. Right. Or was he perhaps carrying it on him when it happened? Maybe. Right. Isn't it? This? It's the size of a heart. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm trying to get a sense of like if s someone is here or or something, because clearly clearly something pulled this out of my holster. So it's like I don't know if it's someone playing a prank. They're up on the ceiling. What you know, fish and wire, whatever it is. But so I'm, you're looking around. Make a notice roll for me. You're very alert. As as Tortlock continues to. Over in the corner uh, with her tomahawk wound. <sighs> did we thank Night's Teeth for that donation? Uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, thanks yeah, again, Night's Teeth. We appreciate it. Uh, thank seven. You for the tip. Um, seven? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're, you're scanning the, the ceiling, maybe looking for, for someone playing a prank. You're kind of looking at the walls for any sort of. Uh, but you, you see no sign of anyone being around in this room. <sighs> I, I don't see anything, but this is, this is very, very strange. Uh, so they, you hear a fluster of activity from the front room, and then they burst into the back, uh, Barnabas and the doc, and Barnabas uh, is just pointing at, at Tortla's foot, and the doc comes over, and he says, now, God damn it, I, I thought we were trying to keep this on the quiet side. All right, just, just hang on, miss. Let me, in, let me just take a look at it. I'm going to have to take your boot off. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, that's fine. All right, now here, just sit up on this table next to... Can you move that foul bucket? All right, and uh, he sits you up there and very gingerly takes your uh, boot off and takes his glasses out. Yeah, now that looks just about cut through. Uh, uh, hold on, I, I think I might be able to, to sew it up and bandage it. Let me just see what I can do for you. <laughs> he pulls out his doctor's kit. Oh, oh he rolled a He's one, but you know what? Doctor. I'm gonna re-roll it. I'm gonna re-roll it. Yay! Okay. He rolled a six. Okay. All right. So um, he very expertly kind of uh, checks it out, very gingerly, trying not to to hurt you, and and pulls out some some bandages and some some alcohol, and after a brief amount of time, has sort of sewn up any of the deeper gashes and bandaged it up, and says, uh, "There, that should be." Uh, right as rain for you. It looks actually as after I cleaned it up, it didn't seem to be as serious as I first thought. Oh. Is that feeling all right? Trying yeah. to put a little weight on that. Oh, I think James Bog is gonna have to carry me. Oh, no, that's, James. that's unfortunate. Oh. Foot, foot injuries can often be a bit, <laughs> a bit uh, tricky to heal. So maybe that Thank would you, be best. Maybe not letting her put too much weight on it for a little bit. Thank you. Sure. Give her a little time sure. to I heal would like up properly. to pay you for your services. Oh. Thank you very much for, for that. They are uh, owl beads, Barnabas. Look at that. Uh, that's very kind. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I think the, the best payment you could do for me is to uh, not let anyone know that I was here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be going wait, out the back wait door. Wait, before you go, could you tell us the name of this, and she points at the bucket, this person. The, the name of this patient? Who, who was that? Why? Hold on. Let me see if I can recall. <laughs> They had a distinctly 1800s uh, era specific name. Oh, of course, of course they would. Uh, um, as makes sense. Right, that, as we are in the 1800s. Completely that right. is what the, a strange way to say that. <laughs> I agree. Uh, sometimes when I get a bit flustered, I, I speak uh, in strange temporal ways. Uh, that's El Ellsworth Crafton. Mm -hmm. Ellsworth 
Crafton. Ellsworth Crafton. He he is uh, was rather a a, a minor, I, I believe. Now, if you excuse me, I I'm, I must be getting back to my practice. Of course. He goes out the door. Barnabas says, "Well, that was exciting. Are you feeling better?" Much much better. I'm actually like the whole time he was doing that, I was like, brutal, brutality of what you people do to yourselves. Now now I so disgusting. again. I would urge you to be careful with your weapons in hey. such close quarters. Barnabas, do you have any idea of the numbers of people who have been afflicted with this? Well, I, I, I don't. I believe the, the, the doctor's told me just as much as he's told you. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like, on the whole, he's been able to, to treat the sickness and, and take care of it. But uh, as, he, as he said, a, a couple of more extreme cases didn't make it out with their uh, wits intact. Where did, uh, where did uh, Ellsworth live? That you got his, uh, you collected his uh, remains. Oh, I collected his remains from the doctor's office. I, I'm not sure where uh, Ellsworth lived. I imagine uh, if he was a miner, m most likely he he lived at one of the Harris mining camps, unless he has a family or residence here in town. But I, I wouldn't know. You notice anything moving in your uh, facility here? Anything move from one area to another that? You were very sure you had put in one place, and then you find it in another. Well, well this curious is a question surprisingly ask. cryptic question coming um, from a not, usually straightforward man. Not as I can say, uh, no. Well, why do you ask? Eh, just, we've seen weird things here. I, I just want to Haven't clarify we all? What, what the baseline is. Sure. Yeah. Nope, uh, pretty normal undertaker's building. Sure. For for what that's worth, sure. Um. Well, I'm gonna lean over to Rosaline and be like, "We should go. We should find out where he lives and go through his stuff." Right. What What do you think we might find? Well, I don't know, but we're gonna find out more than we're finding out here. Gabriel, uh, where we'll are get you stabbed standing? in the foot again. What? Where are you standing? I'm near the bucket. You're I'm near still the bucket. Kind of examining. I, I put the the lump of ghost rock back, but okay. I'm still kind of like examining it. Are you leaning on the op operating or the, the not the operating table, the the autopsy table at all? E well, yeah. I'm, well, where is it? In the middle of the room, and the bucket's on top of the table. Then yes, I, I'm I'm kind of like leaning over it and looking into the bucket. Okay, make an agility roll at a minus two for me. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I'd rather you did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so, so that's, a, that's a two. Uh huh. Okay. But uh, but Gabe notices uh something amiss. Something amiss. Okay. And uh, grabs at. They can't see I'm assuming it. it's going to be something with his gun. Uh, no, actually, no? Um, Gabe notices that as as he's looking at this uh, bucket, he hears a, a sudden splintering noise. Uh, and feels the table begin to give underneath his weight. So uh, Gabe notices that sure. pretty quickly, and I'm going to use he a fake chip to reroll that. Lightning quick moment to recompose himself. Yeah. This is going to be good. There he is. steps He's back good. from yeah. the table, uh, wow. rolling a 10. A 10. Uh, just as the table completely uh, snaps in half and collapses on the ground, sending up a spray of uh, ashes, will all of you make a um, vigor roll for me? Vigor. A vigor roll. Vigor. Vigor. Five. Okay. Four. I didn't vigor very good. Four. Five. 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 What did you get? Two. Two. Uh, would you like to re-roll that? I would. Ba ching! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> nice catch. Nice. Well, I am the marshal. Yeah. Real metal, that. Revigored. So, uh, is there, was there a modifier on that? No. All right, then I got a six. So, everyone succeeds. I rolled a four, but I get plus two because I have style. Okay, so as the, as the table goes crashing in half and Barnabas goes, oh, what? Uh, this huge <laughs> cloud of ash just kind of shoots up into the room and you all reflexively cover oh. your, your mouths in time with your shirts or some bit of your clothing. But Barnabas, who was very surprised by what was going on, gets it right in the face. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, oh it's in my mouth. Oh. You have broken. Oh. Right? What happened? Uh, it seems like oh. it's just... Fell in half as I was examining. Wait, we should go out into the front yes, room. Yes, yes, quite. Yeah. Let's go oh. outside. So he goes out and continues to hack and cough and try and clear ash out of it. He's got like dust, human dust all over his face. Can, oh. I, can 
Can I grab the uh, the ghost rock before we head out? Sure. Okay, I do that. Um. Uh, uh, what What did you do to the table? I was just leaning over it. Well, you'd have to be leaning over it pretty hard to make it collapse well, like that, creature. Well, it's obviously built to keep people's weight on it, is it not? It, it very much is, which is why I'm saying you must have been doing something very uh, uh, unusual on it in order to get it to break well, like that. You were now in I've room got a with me. lung full of Ellsworth. <coughs> His eyes seem bleary and he keeps coughing and spitting on the floor. Ah. And get you a water? Uh, no, no, thank you. I, I, I think you've all done a, a, enough damage here today. You're dropping guns and getting like tomahawks cut like on your feet. And, and well, I did not Barnabas, enjoy that. Before we go, then, if there's anything else, information wise, that you may know that could help us, this would be the time to tell us. You know as much as I do, Preacher. Now, and please, if, if you would leave me uh, some privacy so that I can uh, clean myself off and, and maybe try and tidy up in the back, there's a lot of uh, human remains uh, buzzing about in my. Uh, Parlor. Uh, that can't be a completely un new experience for you. Well, not in this form so much, Preacher, but Fair I enough. appreciate the note of levity that you tried to introduce to this <laughs> otherwise horrific situation. <laughs> now, uh, I, I have, a, I, I, I have a certain adaptability. It is things. a gift. Now, uh, but please, and he opens the door and kind of ushers you all out. Will everyone make a smarts roll for me, please? Wow. Oh, that's smarts. Mm. Yes. Oh, I'm real smart about this. We got oh. seven. Oh. We did get seven. Uh, Boom. I got a 17. 17. Wow. 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 Whatever's about to happen, I know it inside and out. Four. Four. Okay, so, so you all leave with a, a sense of deja vu about this whole thing, but Tortla, you specifically remember that the last time you were here uh, talking to Barnabas S.B. Cairn, uh, James... Bogue broke a shelf I that, that almost toppled on top of him as well. I wouldn't well. remember that. What's up? I wouldn't remember that. You would not remember that. That's true. <laughs> you have a sense of uh, secondhand deja vu yeah. from this. <laughs> that was Hal Melton who was there at that point. Um, but yeah, you specifically remember a shelf just suddenly breaking and uh, almost toppling on top of James. My cat like hey. reflexes. Like, do you remember when, like, there was a shelf that, like, tried to destroy James in that exact place? Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Yes, I, I do. I do remember getting out of the way there, of the shelf. There's something fishy going on. I don't like this. It reminds me too much of that house. You weren't there. You didn't see it. Which house? The well, one we if the oh, poor Undertaker one. has some sort of poltergeist living in his... Uh, study, then I think we should just avoid the man. I mean, I don't know. I'm not responsible for Barnabas S.B. Cairn. That's an NPC from our <laughs> Patreon backers. Uh, B.S.B. Care submitted that one. Along with uh, Doc James V. That's another Patreon NPC submitted by James V. 1971. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. Who I has been very you. patiently awaiting the arrival of his character uh, all since all the way back in season one. But I wanted to make sure that he got uh, ample opportunity to fly his blimp into town. So <laughs> here we are. Blimp. I mean, it's a Zeppelin. An air carriage. It's a Zeppelin. Air carriage. Cool. Okay. We're going to Ellsworth's house? We're going to find Ellsworth's stuff? I, I suppose that's the next place we need to go if that's what, if we're going to follow that path. Well, we could uh, see where he was working, which mine he was in, if there's anyone else from that mine that might have been working with him. And then you guys were going to talk to uh, the professor as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I want to take that bit of ghost rock. You have it with you, right? You yeah. grabbed it before you left the room? Uh, yes. Do you think maybe James yeah. should take that? You mm -hmm. might not want to go there. Just to be Look, <laughs> it's been a while and we have not had any sort of confrontation with the professor. I think that I can talk him out of any sort of hostility he might still be feeling. Well, it's probably best if I don't go. I would gather, just if Archie well, is there. Don't stay too far behind us. I, I won't. I'll be right out. I, I'll wait for you all. For those of you who don't know, the last time that uh, Prof Brown and Archie crossed paths with the posse, uh, they were trying to get the posse's help in hunting down a rogue automaton that had run out into the woods and was firing on every living being that it saw. That they made. They made they it. Did they made it, and it yeah. accidentally got out. Um, it's but not like they were just being 
like selfless. They they made a killing machine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but uh, after the posse helped them uh, shut down Death Steel, the automaton, uh, things Good got name. a bit heated when Archie saw Rosaline casting a spell and revealed that Hucksters had killed his family, mm. and he spat at her feet, at which point Gabriel Pryor drew on him, and uh, when he would not apologize, fired a bullet into Archie's leg. Uh, so there is not it a lot of... It actually hit him. It, uh, it just hit... Because remember... It ended did up it just hit... The, did it miss? Yeah. It shook him, I think. It shook him. That's right. Yeah. You, you shook him. You, you made him do the, the gunfighter's dance. Right. Um, so uh, there's not a lot of love lost between Prof Brown and Archie and the posse. Nope. Also an NPC. Also a Patreon NPC. Right. Archie. <laughs> yeah. We should shoot all the Patreon NPCs. <laughs> you should. <laughs> See what happens. Real well. well. All right. Let's we get killed one of their daughters. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Yeah. All right. So uh, what are you guys doing? Uh, well, should we go to the house first or should we go talk to the professor? I suppose he's going to need time to look over that rock, right? Well, I, I, I guess we could split up and you two could manage the house while... Uh, James and I head to the professor. Great, we could do that. Does that sound like a plan, everybody? I mean, we probably just want to drop it off to the professor, tell him a little bit about what is going on. Mm, do you? I can't we help. Told? Huh? We we it's like we're doing this like on the DL. Like, do you want to tell him? Sure. That's a good point. Perhaps we shouldn't tell him anything more than we absolutely have to. Well, I mean, you definitely want to tell him enough that you can get any useful information out of him without just mystifying him and potentially wasting his time. Hey, right, look at this right. rock. <laughs> what are you Anything see? anyways, <laughs> funny about it. Yeah. I can't help but wonder if this rock is perhaps a byproduct <laughs> of what has happened to these people instead of a cause. I don't know. It could be either way. Well, maybe we should all go together. I have to say that, like... I've heard less about people burning up and leaving a rock behind than I have about people returning from the dead. I, I do not think that is that issue at the moment. These people are not returning from the dead anytime soon. No, I'm just saying, like, a person, like, catching on fire and leaving a rock behind is... Strange. Really strange. It's quite strange. Let's go to the professor first, and right. I'll let you all go. Uh, I'll be there, but I'll of stay course. back. All right, so you guys are heading to uh, Prof's lab yeah. on the outskirts of town? Yeah. All right. Prof's shop. Well, um, so you guys, you guys head over there, and uh, you see the familiar building that I don't think any one of you have probably uh, darkened the doorway of since the last time you interacted with them. They seem to have kept to themselves when it comes to you as well. Every now and then you'll see them at a distance in the town streets. Uh, the professor just always seems distracted, but Archie always very pointedly never looks at any of you when you encounter him out in the streets. Um, so you guys head up. Are you going to knock on the door? Uh, yeah, I'll go up and knock on the door. Okay. Uh, so you knock on the door, and you hear uh, what sounds like things falling over and crashing inside, uh, and then the door is uh, flung open in front of you, uh, revealing some of the noise of activity from within. And you see uh, the prof. Hello! Yes! Uh, <laughs> wait. Uh, what? Uh, what, are you, what are you doing here? Professor Brown, uh, I'm uh, sorry to bother you uh, these days, but we have uh, run into a situation that I think your particular expertise might be something somewhat used to us. You see the professor has what looks like a pinwheel on a stick on his belt, and he has his, his hand on it, and he's he's looking at all of you. Uh, a, a problem, you say? Now, you seem rather nervous, but I'm, I'm here to let you know that we are not here with any sort of hostility. We are here seeking your help. Is that a fact? And you hear from uh, back in the lab, Prof, who is it? Uh, don't don't worry about it, Archie. Just 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 keep working on that experiment. Uh, make sure it doesn't fall over again. Uh, uh, now, uh, what what is it that I can uh, help you with? If it is indeed my help you need, he does not release his death grip on the pinwheel uh, on his belt. <laughs> can we perhaps step inside? Uh, do you think that would be wise? Ar Archie is in there, and he's not very excited. To see or hear or well, think I'm about hoping, any of you. I'm hoping that you can uh, contain the uh, anger of your assistant for a moment. There are things that are potentially threatening the entire town at stake. 
Um, make a persuade roll. Four. Four? It's not a four. Oh, yeah, four. Right. four plus four, so it's an eight. Yeah, which is like, don't you have my super good at it. <laughs> it's like, didn't you sink a lot of You're stuff like, into how being could good you at persuading? you rolled a four? If you rolled a one, it's a five. Um, <laughs> very well. I, I guess if it's for the, the good of the town, then perhaps we could put aside our differences for a, a moment and speak as acquaintances. Um, one moment. And he sort of like pushes the door to a little bit. Archie! I need you to go stand at the back of the room and um, put your hands behind your back and lean against a wall. <laughs> what? I, just do it, Archie. All right, prof. <laughs> so you hear some noise of activity uh, inside and then uh, the prof comes back out and says, all right, I'm going to let you in. But I'd advise you stay near the door and make no sudden movements. Fine, fine. I'm not afraid to use this. Uh, and you see it just sort of like rotate a little in the breeze that's blowing down the street. <laughs> I, trust me, I do not want any trouble with you and your pinwheel. <laughs> Very wise. So he <laughs> opens the door and kind of steps back inside. Um, so you guys walk in and see the normal elements you remember here. All of the dripping beakers and buzzing things and spare parts all over various tables. Everything's in a state of clutter and disrepair. Um, but as soon as you cross the threshold and Archie sees who it is, he, he straightens up and, and looks like angrily directly at, at the two of you and Prof goes, oh, Archie, they're, they're here on a, on a mission of peace for the good of the town. Isn't that right, preacher? That's correct. Um, Archie doesn't say anything. He just sort of leans back against the wall with his hands behind his back and just glares at all of you in turn, just quietly. And the Prof says, now, now Archie, just, just stay there and let's hear them out and see if we can do anything to help. Archie just continues to stare. All right, now, 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 preacher and, and associates, well, what is it exactly that I can do for you? No, I'm no expert on the matter, but would you confirm for me that what I have here is a lump of ghost rock? Hmm. Uh, may I? Of course. So he lowers his goggles and takes it from you and holds it up uh, to the light. Yes, with these filtered lenses, I can get a better look at the makeup of... Ah, yep, absolutely. Big hunk of ghost rock. Now, is there anything about it that seems out of the ordinary from a, from a regular specimen? Oh, sorry, didn't realize we weren't done. May I? <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, let's see. No. Pretty large for a naturally occurring piece, but no, it I'm looks fairly normal. I'm not sure if we can call this a naturally occurring piece. Uh, from the back of the room, you hear Archie pipe up, Doc, a prof. <laughs> make, Quick! <laughs> make sure I'll make that mistake too. Make sure it doesn't explode or anything. No, no, Archie, there's no need for that. As I said, the preacher's here to help the town. Uh, how, how exactly is me identifying a piece of ghost rock as a piece of ghost rock going to help the town? Now, speaking of explosions, this particular piece of ghost rock was not pulled out of the ground, but out of the remains of someone who uh, met something of an early demise. What? What do you mean? Someone who uh, has gotten, I, I kind of look around to everyone else, and it's just kind of like, we need to just say what's going on, or we're not going to make any. Did, did the four of you witness this demise? No, no. We, we, uh, <sighs> we were brought in second hand, but we were told that a man displayed signs of an influenza-like disease and then spontaneously caught on fire and was reduced to ashes <gasps> and this lump of rock. Burst of flame. Burn away to nothing, way you could say, hey? leaving only ash in this. Yes. <clears throat> what? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask them. Yes. I'm sorry, who are you talking to? No matter. Now. Maybe a little matter. Now, uh, this, <laughs> this is, uh. Put my hand back. <laughs> happened, to, like, <laughs> happened to someone in town? Yes, and there are more people who are sick at the moment. Of course, and, uh. Whereabouts do these people live and work? Now, maybe you should take your hand off of your... Uh, oh, pardon me, I'm gig actually just tightening my vest. Oh, okay. It's got a little pull tie at the back that Archie rigged up for me, and when I pull on it, it cinches the waist. Well, that, that's not information we are Very privy becoming. to at the moment. Well, yes, yeah, I, I found it rather ingenious myself. I, I keep telling him to patent it. What were we talking about? We're trying <laughs> to... 
basically the town is trying to stop a panic from happening, so we are not privy to the addresses and names of those who are currently afflicted with the problem. Of course, we that just makes know sense. that there are others. Well, this town is uh, relatively new to the ghost rock phenomenon. In fact, uh, the nation at large is relatively new to it, so uh, of course the, the town doctor wouldn't be prepared for this, but uh, this sounds like a pretty common case of ghost rock fever. What? Ghost rock fever, Ray, I said. I, I heard what you said, but what is it? Ah, oh, it's a fever uh, caused by ghost rock. All right, well, could you explain that is it? That <laughs> Yes. Well, it is. Could you explain it a little further? I'm sorry, I'm confused about which part of that you're not picking up on. Well, how is it that it... What is it exactly? It's Ghost it's rock disease. fever. <laughs> how do you get uh, ghost rock fever? Ah, an excellent question. <laughs> Thank you, James. It's so yeah. good that you're yeah. here. Uh, typically, those who are working uh, in, in close, constant proximity with uh, ghost rock vapors uh, have uh, uh, a higher likelihood of contracting the disease. Uh, now, um, this is something that uh, is, is common among people in my profession, new scientists, and Archie as well, which is why I am very insistent on our periodic breaks to get some fresh air. Isn't that right, Archie? And Archie just continues to just glare at all of you. That's right. Now, uh, miners also uh, spend a lot of time uh, around Ghost Rock, especially Ghost Rock miners. Now, I should have said that from the beginning. Ghost rock miners spend a lot of time around ghost rock and its vapors, um, especially and, and those who work in refineries, anyone who spends a lot of time around uh, ghost rock byproducts. Now, over time, this builds up in the system and, and can cause uh, uh, fever-like symptoms. If left untreated, or, or if uh, someone doesn't have uh, uh, the, the, the strength of body to, to fight off the disease, it can continue to heat up, boiling their brains in their skulls. If, however, they still continue with the disease and have not been able to cure themselves of it at that point, in very rare cases, it can cause, as you said, spontaneous combustion, leaving behind nothing but ash and a lump of ghost rock about this size. You're telling me that that's what happened here in Coldwater Creek? Well, it seems that the evidence is pointing to that situation, yes. And perhaps there are others who it might happen to. Mm. Now, you seem to act as though there is a way to treat it. Absolutely, uh, proper medical care should be able to take care of it. Just what? plain medical care as though it was the, the flu or cold. Well, yes, but uh, as most of you should well know, uh, medical care can't get rid of every sickness. Some people just are predisposed to certain diseases or don't have such uh, strong enough uh, systems to fight off the infection, and it affects everyone differently. Particularly weak people might have a harder time getting rid of the disease. And in those people, it can incubate and move on to its more advanced state where, as we said, poof, poof, ah. You said vapor. Is there any other way of uh, inhaling it? Perhaps ash? Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that could happen. Uh, are you talking about the ash left behind by the bodies? Re perhaps, No. Yes. Curious side effect of ghost rock fever. All of the accumulated ghost rock in the afflicted person's body is condensed by the heat of the flame into this solid lump you see here. Fascinating phenomenon. So the ash... No precedent for it in the natural world. Would just be ash. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, mm. just human ash. Now, if one were to powder the ghost rock like some uh, new scientists do in creating their, their tinctures and salves and ointments uh, uh, and inhaled a great deal of powdered ghost rock, a similar thing could happen. Mm. Now, my, my question is, this town has been a ghost rock mining town for quite some time Correct. now. Correct. Why is it that these symptoms would suddenly be bursting up all over the place? Well, uh, are they bursting up suddenly? Seems as though that's the case. Have you spoken with the doctor? <coughs> Bless you. He came to us in something of a tizzy earlier. So was the doctor who brought this to your attention? Yes. Well, uh, did he mention that this was happening all of a sudden? Well, no, he actually said it'd been happening for a while, just it's been getting more and more and more people have been coming in with this. That makes sense. Archie, uh, there was recently a large ghost rock find in the area, was there not? That's right, Prof. There was. Harris opened up a new mine. Real mother load to hear people talk about it. How do you know about it? Everybody knows about it, miss. It's been the talk of the town. So we know about it. Yeah, you guys know about it too. Yeah, yeah. Remind us. It was that claim, it was that claim that, um, right. Right. that Driscoll, it was the cave that you guys, um, Found. Right. Well, perhaps uh, if the Harris Mining Company is uh, working its its miners for too many hours down in the mines and not giving them enough breaks to, to come out of the mines uh, over a period of time, the miners that spend more time down there might be exposed to more and more of the vapors, giving rise to more cases of ghost rock fever. 
Well, that sounds like a very bad thing if that's happening, right? Yes, uh, is, is Harris Mining Company aware of this issue? Uh, as far as we know, they've asked the doctor to keep it contained. So it seems like they might have some idea of what's going on. Maybe. Or maybe they're just being careful. You think they're being careful, someone like Harris, who stands to make so much money off of this. And if, and well, if sure. this gets out, then wouldn't that make people not want to work for his mine? Right, exactly. Right. That would happen. Exactly. Either way. Right. <laughs> so he's being just as bad as any other rich man is, isn't he? I suppose when you think about it like that, he could also not want people to know that he has a ghost rock mine that they're getting all this ghost rock out of. Well, everyone uh, knows that. Prof, yeah, everyone does know that already. Right, right. Sorry, Archie. Quite, quite. Well, either way, I think perhaps bringing this to the attention of Harris might be a good idea. Yes, yes. Definitely uh, let the businessman know that uh, his business practices are crushing the common man under his boot, and yeah. uh, I'm sure that he will uh, immediately rectify the situation. I sincerely yes, sure. doubt it. We cannot let him know. Well, no, we can at least, and I say this kind of quietly to both we can at least let him know that we know. Maybe we should let everyone else know. That would put the doctor in danger. Well, we can, and perhaps the professor here. Well, he needs the doctor, so we'll see how that goes. Professor, we appreciate the help you've given us. Is there anything else we can, uh, that we might need to know to save this from becoming a uh, larger problem than it already has? Uh, I mean, just let people know they need to take uh, ventilated breaks. They get away from the, the ghost rock. They, I, I believe uh, the, the most recent research said uh, being exposed to it for a continued period of time, longer than uh, four hours on a regular basis, can lead to potential cases of ghost rock fever. So more regularly scheduled breaks or, for fresh air could potentially circumvent this problem. Uh, Tort, you've been um, quiet during this. Are you looking around at all or just kind of taking things in? Uh, yeah, I'm looking around. Basically, as soon as this turned out to not be like a uh, spiritual monster -y thing, I like tort lost interest. Make a notice roll for me. Just you. Okie dokie. Oh, Aced on both of them. Yes, wow. Oh, okay. Good. Do I need to keep rolling or? Uh, uh sure. Okay. An 11. Good. All right, so, um, you see over in the uh, corner of the laboratory mm -hmm. what looks like a large something, a large bulky something that seems to have a had a sheet very uh, quickly thrown over it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a little bit of a corner revealed, and it looks like some sort of strange, new-looking metallic device. Does it look like an explodey, blowy uppy? Kill all my woodland friends, kind of device. It does not. It looks okay. uh, very boxy and and large. Okay. Boxy and large. Boxy and large. Can I sneak over to it? Uh, yep. Boxy and large, and it's over in the corner. You want to try and sneak over to it? Yep. Sure. Make a stealth roll. Stealth roll. While everyone is distracted talking Dang to it. the prof, a three and a one. Okay. Not successes. My foot's hurt. Yeah, that's true. That's, I, Same one. I try to sneak over and I'm like, Whatever. ow! You, you try and ow. sneak over and, and Archie kind of zeroes in on you and says, hey, what are you doing? You shouldn't be sneaking around through the prof's stuff. Why don't you head back over there with, with your friends? Listen, Archie, we're not as close as you think. Like, I'm not down with what they did. You and I could be friends. Like, when he pointed that gun at you, I was like, no, that's not cool. Not at Archie. Yeah, I remember, uh, but thanks all the same. I'm not really that interested in being friends. <laughs> huh. I mean, but, like, if you wanted to, like, we could I get don't. together. We could get back <laughs> That's at fine. No? Yeah, kid's a little shit. <laughs> Maybe um, he wants to be more than friends. He kind of walks walks over as he's talking to you and just sort of adjusts the the sheet on that thing and tries to do it nonchalantly, but pulls okay. pulls it back down over it. Um, so yes, I, nothing else I can really add to this situation, uh, but that would be my uh, professional read of the situation. <clears throat> what? No, I already told them. Who is it that you're talking to then? Who? 
you, you just acted like you were talking to someone that... To you, miss, speaking to you about the Ghost Rock situation. No, the you Ghost looked Rock to fever. your side and we didn't see anyone there and you said something. To your side? To your side. I don't recall. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, Professor. All right. We well, sure do we have uh, flavorful characters in this here town. <laughs> we do, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything else? Professor, I think that is everything that we need from you. Yeah. All right, well, um, we appreciate your help. Yes, in the interest of the greater good of the town, it's uh, important that we get this out, but we don't want to cause a panic. Yes, let's People don't want to be uh, thinking that a a anyone could catch ghost rock fever at any moment. That's not the way it works. Are you sure? Relatively sure. Oh, correct. The latest research would support that. Mostly. It's an inexact and new science. But still, taking often uh, frequent fresh air breaks should help with the problem. Just let the mining company know and I'm sure they'll implement it post haste. We'll contact OSHA. May <laughs> I keep this? <laughs> no. Well, we, 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 aren't, we might need it, but if we find out we don't, we'll bring it back to you. Well, I could fuel a large number of my devices and experiments with this amount of ghost rock. It would Tell be very what. helpful. Tell you what, Professor, how about you hold on to that rock now? If we don't come back within the next day or two and ask for it from you, then consider it yours for your help. Fair enough. Thank you very much. And he puts it down on a table and reaches out his hand, but he's making eye contact with uh, the empty air right next to you. Been a pleasure. I, I, I sidle over to the side and then shake his hand. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, I should get back to my work. Uh, Archie, uh, bring the experiment back out. All right, Prop, maybe we should wait till they leave. We don't want to offend their sensibilities. Well, it's time Let's for us go. to go anyway. Well, you yeah. all have a interesting day. <laughs> 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 we will. Every day we have is interesting. Well, we live exciting, interesting, scientific lives. There's no point in Fantastic. Having... It is fantastic. <laughs> I'm... All right, all right, let's go, let's go. When Professor, we... Archie. <laughs> when we get outside, I want to turn to everyone. They seem right, really nice. He closes the door behind him. And uh, just say, I, we, ca we can't let this Stand. We have to talk to Harris, we have to talk to someone, but we can't I let agree. this sort of thing happen. How do we know them again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all of you, but I'm somewhat <coughs> happy that we don't have a closer relationship with those two. Seems for the best, yes. I don't right. know if it was wise leaving the ghost rock with him, but nope, that anyways. Was not the choice I would have made. <laughs> well, I don't think we need it any longer. It's probably worth a vast amount of money. <laughs> well, there is that, but... Plus, we don't know what you they probably might be could have used it to buy an enclosed other, carriage. I don't know who I'm going to sell Ghost Rock to. What other death machines they might be powering that we have to stop at some point? Look, but anyway, what is far more valuable than Ghost Rock is the fact that we have friendship. knowledge that Harris is doing something that he is trying to cover up. Yes, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real treasure. Yeah. No. <laughs> it is that we, we have knowledge of something that Harris is doing that is potentially putting this town in danger. And I think either holding that over him or getting him to stop doing it could be very valuable. We for need us. to get him to stop know, doing it. Your priorities and my priorities are the same. Uh, I'm just saying, perhaps we can also benefit from this as we save people from uh, conflagr conflagration. Gration based death. Well, at the end of the day, the power we have over the most powerful is beneficial <coughs> to everyone, isn't it? If we can control them, then we can control how they treat people beneath them. Well, well said, darling. Thank you. Harris controls most of this town already. I've dealt with many of these types of men. We're, we're, it's not going to be as simple as going to him and, and holding this over him. He already no. knows what problem he's got here. He's not going to be in a dealing mood. Well, we may have more influence over this town than he realizes. I am right. going to tell the group, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. What I want to do is I want to go to the outside wall where that thing was. Mm -hmm. I want to see if there's a little field mouse sized hole. Okay. And I want to turn into a field mice, mouse and go inside and see what it was. Can you turn into a field mouse now? Can I? Isn't that smaller than what I, an owl? Uh, there is, is it, was that the, the way the sizes were broken down? This, this Let's find out real quick. Way, Shape change, right? I believe oh, the way it worked was that if it was I bigger, I couldn't do it. Right. Okay. Yeah. You should be able to do it. Uh, yeah. That should work. 
So uh, make a spend your points and make a uh, tribal medicine roll. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh wow. yeah. That's a lot of aces. That's uh, so that's a uh, fifteen. Okay. Uh, does anything happen on a raise with that no. spell? Okay, cool. Well, so you <laughs> super, super, cool. super quickly really, and easily. I really want to be a. I'm like, I want to be an awesome looking field mouse with like a little natural <clears throat> mohawk. And if other field mice see me, I want them to be impressed with how good looking I am. Okay, cool. I can definitely do that. So you shrink down into a uh, punk rock field mouse before his time. Uh -huh. um, and you are trying to get inside a hole back into the laboratory? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you find one and you're able to wriggle your way through and it's in the back corner over by that uh, thing that was under a sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you trying to do in here? I, I want to get in and see what it is. Okay. So like if it's still in the sheet, I'll get under the sheet to see it. But he, they were saying they were going back to it, so they might have pulled it up by now. Uh, this is not the experiment they were working then on. I want to so you can actually head. see them. They're at a table in the middle, just sort of like doing techno babble and working with some sort of like small glass looking device on the table. Um, you get underneath the sheet, and from your vantage point as a field mouse, this looks like just a towering metal monolith. Mm -hmm. It's got, uh, it's, it's like two different levels of rectangular slabs that are just sort of fitted together with like pistons and things that you don't really understand the way they work. You're not super familiar with with machines, yeah. and it doesn't seem to have it doesn't seem to have any immediately apparent uh, function to your eyes. Okay. Uh, it just looks like a big, pistony, shiny metal thing with a lot of Do, does moving it have parts. anything on it that looks like a gun? No, no, nothing on it that looks like a projectile Is of any there kind. Anything that you're on it that with. looks like a door? Uh, no, nothing on it that looks like a door. Okay. I stab it with my with your mouse paw. With my mouse paw. All right, so and you I leave. sneak up to it and ineffectually paw at it with your with your mouse claws, and then scoot out the back and turn back into a human. Yep. Oh. Okay. And then I return. And I'm like, oh man, I have had some stomach problems. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's good you take care of that. Oversharing. Thank. You. Thank you so much for telling us all the time. <laughs> I, I don't know, know why I went into a weird accent right <laughs> there. Thank you so much oh for my. telling us. We can all be British. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for telling us all the time. All right. So, what is the plan now? Are you guys heading to Harris Mining Office? I think we should go to. Well, yes, that is something we should do. But maybe we should go to the house first, to to Ellsworth's home. Should we? Do you think it's worth finding anything there first before we go? Well, we could at least find out if what the doc said is true. Like, is Ells was Ellsworth working a ton and not taking breaks? My assumption is yes. If, if I have a good assessment of someone like Harris, which I imagine that I do, he is overworking those folk that are in the mines. You guys get the feeling that you have about 30 abstract minutes of time yeah, yeah. left to figure out what it is you want to do. I think, I think yeah. maybe. It's a, it's a strange sensation in your brains. <laughs> I, I feel like we could go longer, though. <laughs> I don't know why am I going into Irish. Irish. Why did you? Are you fucking accent? James? What happened to James Bogue? He he like almost got some ashes in his mouth, yeah. and now he's seven different people. <laughs> Funny, I feel like Wednesday night had almost an hour more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, whatever they do, I'm gonna plead gastrointestinal disorder, and I'm gonna go and I want to draw what I saw, and I'm gonna go back to the evil owl thing. Okay. I want to find. Doc James. And I Doc James ask, V? Doc James V. I want to ask him what it is. Dr. James Victor Milanova Ciento 71. That's the one. What What are you asking him? What the machine is that I saw. She shrunk into a field mouse and checked out the machine under the under the tarp in the back of the workshop. Uh. She's going to sketch it out and show it to him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it might be good to find out uh, if these men had not only were working too hard, but were perhaps working towards something differently as in perhaps well, they were exposed to something on purpose well we could talk to viola do you think going to, straight to harris i mean he's probably not going to give us information right away we're going to have to well, work up to that either way we've been meaning to talk to harris ever since we've come into this town right. and it seems now that he has finally physically made a call upon Coldwater creek this might be the ripest opportunity to do so True, we don't know how long he'll be here, so it might be worth it. We could go over there first. We can if always go to Ellsworth's later. If there's any time worth throwing your, our weight around a little bit, it's probably now while the iron is hot. Let's do it then. 
We'll go to Paris. So are you going with them yeah. or you're going to, to talk to yep. Dr. James V? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll deal with that in a sec. So you, again, complain of gastrointestinal Maternity. distress. My tummy! My tummy hurts. All and you, breakfast uh, soup. Breakfast soup is done me in again. There's a lot of beans in breakfast soup. Mm -hmm. Breakfast isn't mean. Oh. It's meant to be soup, and I've said it a hundred <laughs> times, and I will say it a hundred times more. Quite right, my dear. <laughs> so, um... Uh, there are some things that just are not meant to be. Right. <laughs> Actually, let's handle that first. Um, right. So you head back to uh, your giant evil owl in town, mm -hmm. and you uh, knock on the front door of Felicia's Grace? You're yes. I am? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, ah. Hello, my dear. You are here to place an order for Smith and Robart? Oh, no. I so <laughs> admire your giant owl. Ah, uh, yes. Well, it's not an owl. I don't it's an air carriage. I don't hate it at all. And I wanted you to know how much I love it. Well, it's a lovely and very specific sentiment to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you seem to know so many things about fake owls. I do uh, we, air carriages and uh, many other devices of the new scientific movement. That's exactly... I myself hold three PhDs from uh, several different very esteemed three universities. Three PhDs? Yes, indeed. Wow! Oh, man! So impressive. I was Will you make a persuade roll for me? Because <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sounded sarcastic. <laughs> Two and a three. No. Yeah. Uh, you guys are worse at persuade than I am. Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Wait a second. Uh, I can get the benefit of an edge for the round of one scene. Uh, why don't you take very attractive? Uh, uh, that'll give you a plus four bonus to your charisma. That's that's what I want. Okay. All right. So spend your card. Um, so the the sun is just uh, just skip attractive. Go yeah. right to yeah, very. Yeah. Get the yeah, good yeah. one. Uh, the sun is striking, uh, well, actually, I think very attractive gives you an additional plus two. So just, you would just get attractive. Because it just, each one gives you plus two. Okay, but very okay. attractive gives you a total of four. So we'll just say attractive. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, the sun is striking the uh, multifaceted windows of Felicia's Grace and reflecting on you in a very uh, golden, luminescent sort of way. Getting the, the golden hour. So, in fact, you rolled a successful persuade roll. Oh, yes, why, thank you very much, miss. And might I say, uh, you are looking very lovely this afternoon. <laughs> you may say that. I came here because I Hold thought on. to myself... Do you smell that? What is that odor? <laughs> no. So foul and so sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, how rude of me to uh, interrupt a beautiful lady clearly while she is speaking. It clearly wasn't me. I thought to myself, you know who's brilliant and could tell me what this thing is? You? You flatter me. I thought anyone with a giant not evil owl thing would clearly know. Yes, uh, I have drawn this. You can might the proportions so, might be off. Let's see. Uh, how would you? How would we see how well you drew? Okay. Um, make a smarts roll for me. Very smarts. <laughs> We're dealing with him. Yeah, make a smarts roll to see how well you could translate what you saw into an accurate drawing. Of Come it. on, smarts. Five. Five. Yeah. I see. Uh, yes, some sort of uh, mechanical device. Um, what is the purpose of this machine? I don't know. I want you to tell me that. Oh, I see. You there have no information. There were no doors and no guns. Uh, no Why would guns. anyone want two big slabs and hide it under a sheet? Well, it doesn't appear to be ambulatory. Suspicious. Uh, it was hidden under a sheet, you say? Yes. Where was it you saw this device? In my dreams. Make a persuade roll for me. <laughs> but add a two to it, because you are s looking so good looking in this uh, so... reflected light from Felicia's Grace. Oh, good. Oh. Oh. I, I... Okay, so that's... Ah, uh, yes. That's, that's good. I myself have been affected by dream inventions as well. I would just like to say that it says your charisma is increased two plus four. Oh, okay, well then, yeah. So it yeah. doesn't say plus two, it says increase two plus four. There we go, then take very... Well, you took very I'm attractive. very attractive. You're adding a four right. to that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, yes, well, uh, it stands to reason that a creature as lovely as yourself would have dreams as vivid and interesting as this. Yes, uh, it appears to be some sort of device that maybe one could use to uh, mass produce things. <gasps> Just like full on bondage gear. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, perhaps to, uh, to print 
uh, things very quickly. Yes, it could be uh, some sort of augmented printing press. <gasps> okay. Whoa. That would be my best Whoa! and most educated guess. You are awesome. I don't <sighs> even hate your owl thing anymore. I never did. I still don't know <laughs> what the owl thing is you are referring to. Your fly owl thing. Oh yes, Felicia's Grace. This is an <laughs> air carriage. You keep saying that. Because that's what it's called. An owl. <laughs> well, who am I to argue with such a fancy lady? You have been so helpful. Oh my God! Seriously. <laughs> Or do, are you not smelling that? <laughs> Where is that coming from? I am totally, oh my gosh. This town smells bad. <laughs> Perhaps I should spend more time indoors. Uh, you'll excuse me, but please no. feel free to call upon me at any what time. What would Rosaline do in a moment like this? Oh, darling, kiss something. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's your Rosaline. Very opinion. well. <laughs> I shall Rogers, kiss Rogers. something. <laughs> <laughs> and he very yeah, yeah. graciously kisses your hand. No, but like, like the way Tort does it is to just like throw her hand into his face. <laughs> and as he does that, he wrinkles his nose and suddenly puts together where it is the smell is coming from. And he steps back, his eyes watering a bit, and says, uh, Thank you. Uh, it has been most entertaining, but I remembered. Yes. I have left the kettle on. <laughs> <laughs> and I should go uh, before the whole ship burns yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, oh. I'll, t I'll come back sometime. We can hang out. Perhaps. Perhaps, yes. yes but I am very busy. Hmm. So, okay. thank you. You've been super helpful. As have you. I won't stab your owl again. And I turn around and leave. What? <laughs> and he turns around and goes back inside. And All he right. looks out a window later and sees Tort walking away and goes like, Why did I think that looked good? <laughs> <laughs> Is that dried intestine on her coat? <laughs> um, so you guys are heading over to Harris Mining. Mm -hmm. All right. So what are you going to do? Well, maybe we should start by talking with Viola and then see where, I, mean, I hope Harris is here. I'm a little worried about Driscoll being here, though. I it just, will. again, I want to caution how we're approaching this. Because clearly, Harris has already had his hands in this. And the minute we introduce what we know, we implicate many people. Well, it is not in Harris's interest to have his miners exploding any more than it is in the town's interest. But so I, I think we what should... What I'm saying is perhaps it is in his interest. You think he wants the miners exploding? Well, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you say it like that, it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> what I want more than anything else is to have all of my miners explode. It's the only way to make sure. It's the only thing that can be done. We've lost. This is, this is Jordan's fuck wugget moment. I really like that. I think he wants yeah. the miners explode. Yes, let's, let's go with that. Uh, no, I think if, <laughs> if they came upon something that they should not have... I see. This is a convenient way of getting rid of it. Look, either way, we are, we are here, well, at least Rose and I have been here to get in touch with Harris from the beginning. We now have a good reason to talk to him. We have something that we could potentially hold over him and something that we need his help to fix. Uh, I... I I understand that. I'm 100% behind you. Both, don't, but don't you think that he might have some connections with the Baron? Perhaps, but I'm just saying we've uh, we've implicated people in this town before and brought them into our business. I just want us to be a little bit cautious as we speak with him. Bog, if there's anyone who can handle talking to men with power, it is myself. Here's what happens when the Sometimes cautious, curious, and overconfident hindrances all get together in <laughs> one bowl of stew. <laughs> How a conversation! <laughs> well, maybe it's, I think we should start not with uh, we know that your miners are sick, right. but just start with you know no, of introducing course. ourselves anyway and kind of see where it goes from there. We are simply coming to call as members of the town who who are interested in its uh, development. Certainly. Quite. All right, All right, well, let's use your connection with Viola to get in and to get going. I agree. So we'll go inside. You walk inside, uh, and immediately Viola looks up and notices you at the door, and she seems really nervous, and she says, Uh, they're here, M Mr. Harris. Should I send them back? 
Violeta. And you hear a, a voice from the back say, uh, Yes, Viola, dear, you can send them in. Wow, that was significantly easier than I expected. And she, she looks at you a bit wide-eyed and kind of mouths it. It's all right, dear. Uh, I, it sounds like we have an appointment. Well, let's go. So we march very confidently, or Rosaline does, into oh, the no. office. Oh, yes! <laughs> I'm ascotting it up. So you're marching confidently into his yes. office. Uh, and what you see is uh, Mr. Harris, not Zachary Driscoll, seated oh, behind his desk. But Mr. Harris also has an ascot? Uh, no, Zachary Driscoll is seated in a chair uh, just slightly off to the side of oh, Mr. Good. Harris. So we expect you to take the ascot off when nope. you're doing Harris. No, I'm just going <laughs> to do one of those. Harris <laughs> Driscoll. Harris Driscoll. Uh, well, sorry. Harris Is Jordan in there somewhere? Driscoll. Um, and, uh, <laughs> there was no Jordan left. <laughs> I guess not. We've broken him. Uh, Harris is, is sitting behind his desk, and uh, Driscoll is smiling in a way that makes him seem very pleased with himself. And Harris says, uh, I was wondering when it was that you would all come to call. Uh, please come in and have a seat. Well, wonder no more, Mr. Harris. The time has come. Um, so chat has unlocked their reputations precede them, oh. which means uh, Harris is completely aware of everything that you guys have been up to oh. in town. That's not uh, good, is it? While he's while well. he's been gone, as uh, as he has been informed at least by the various people who report to him ah, in town. He knows we're men of we're men and women of import through the Driscoll filter. Yes, yeah, so right. Zachary Driscoll. So uh, you must be the famous preacher prior. Well, I don't know if I would say famous. But oh, that is the word that I would use from what I hear around town. As, well, uh, we are all allowed to use our own lexicons, are we not? Uh, that is correct. I thank you for extending me that courtesy. And uh, you must be the uh, lovely Miss Rosaline Byrne. And I, I must say, you, uh, your descriptions do you no justice. Well, thank you, Mr. Harris. That's very kind of you. And... I see by that star. Are you wearing your star? By I'm, it's back on, yeah. I see by that star that you must be uh, Deputy James Boak, associate of the preacher and Marshal Hurlis. Is that correct? Now, there's another one of you, uh, an, an Indian, I believe. Well, tort law does her own thing for the most part. So I have heard. Seems you have been very busy since you arrived here in town. Vampire 54. Vampire. Hey, oh, hey, hey, Vampire so 54, thank Thanks you. For the tip. Well, we've been trying to help better this town, as a matter of fact. Is well, that what you call it? Well, I do. Interesting way of phrasing things. It is. Well, that is what I would call it. I don't know what your associate here, Driscoll, would call it, as he doesn't seem to like us quite. Oh, don't much. you worry too much about Zachary. He gets a bit self important and full of himself when I go on my errands. Isn't that correct, Zachary? And, and uh, Zach sort of looks over at uh, Harris and says, uh, yes, that's, that's right, uh, Mr. Harris. I, I can sometimes get a bit carried away. Uh, let's, let's raise our glasses in a toast real quick. Oh. Vampire 54? Okay. Vampire 54 wants a toast. Two first meetings. May it not blow up. Two, Two first meetings. May, may it not blow up. up. Set them up. Knock them down. Thank you for the tip, Vampire 54. We don't? Good tip. Um, That's right, uh, Mr. Harris, I can sometimes get a bit carried away, but I just want people to make sure that they know that your interests are being well attended while you're away. Yes, yes, that's quite well, enough, Zachary. I think you've made your point. Mr. Harris, if there's one thing I think we can all agree on, it is that cold water is the sort of town that keeps you on your toes. And it has certainly kept us on our toes since we have shown up. Chad has also unlocked another fistful of her Spanish gold. Oh. Oh. We roll everything. All right, yeah, we better we better. We've got ten rolling. minutes. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, I hear you've been very busy. Very busy indeed. That's putting it lightly. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> quite so. It seems that you've been busy as well since you've been out of town for so long. I have been, but uh, Miss Byrne, I make it my business to be busy. A busy man is a businessman. That's what my father always said. How I definitely did not make that up just now. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I did expect you to come calling. Uh, Mr. Driscoll informed me that for a preacher, you seem to be uh, very keen on the financial goings-on of Coldwater Creek. So, uh, Well, the financial goings-on affects the church, doesn't it? That it does. 
course, and being servants of the town and of the people and of the Lord, you would, of course, need to be involved in those dealings. Now, what is it I can do for you all today? Uh, you get the distinct impression that he does not like you guys a whole lot. Oh, just yeah? In, just in case. <laughs> we getting that? <laughs> well, <Smidge>. since <laughs> the preacher here and... And James and myself have been a bit influential ourselves in town. We thought it best to meet another man who's quite influential and has quite a hand in most of the dealings in town. Uh, allow me to be straightforward. Uh, do I have anything to fear from the group of you? Are you intending to set up some sort of rival operation in town? Do you work? for any other organization, and do you have any nefarious plans that I should be aware of? I'll tell you now, if you tell me, straightforwardly to my face, I will grant you amnesty, bear you no ill will, and allow you to leave the town unmolested. You must run into something like this quite <laughs> a bit, I suppose. That sounds rehearsed. I have been around for quite some time, Miss Byrne. I've uh, met many people, but not many people who are still obstacles to my forward momentum. Mr. Harris, you're a rather suspicious man. I can understand that. A man with your standing in the town must make a lot of enemies. But I can assure you that at the moment, the only interests we represent are our own and that of the Lord above. Is that so? I well, then, it is. I would ask you again, what is it that I can do for you today? Well, I believe that both you and I know that there is trouble that is happening in the town at the moment. Uh, what trouble would you be referring to, Preacher Pryor? Would that be the gang activity? Would that be the rival rail groups who I am supposed to be meeting with this very moment, but from what I hear have been driven out of town for reasons unknown? Would that be the previous attack of the Holbrook gang on the town? Would that be the miners that are going the missing? the miners that seem to be taken ill, Mr. Harris. I see. Ill with what? Well, the way I've heard it, just from things I've run into in the past, it might be a bit of ghost rock fever. Ghost rock fever? Quite it. Seems and like... Please, Miss Byrne, you have me at a disadvantage. I did not realize you were trained in the medical profession. What exactly is ghost rock fever? Well, I don't think my knowledge of that needs medical training, but I've heard about it through the grapevine, that it is something that can happen to people who spend too much time around ghost rock. Is right. that so? Harris, you're playing the idiot. And I understand that that is simply part of the conversation we are having here, but I think that it would be beneficial for both of us just to speed things up, to just assume that we all know what we are talking about. Hmm. We know that if that were to be happening here in this town to miners that might work for you, that could be very bad for everyone involved and we want to help. Social conflict. All right. Mm. Three rounds. Three oh, rounds. Uh, Exclamation point loud. This is what I live for! Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> These have gone very poorly in my home game past. No, no, no. That was a okay. dramatic task. Okay. The, other, the only other yeah. social conflict we had was when uh, Preacher Pryor tried to out, ah. out uh, right. orate the marshal on your very yeah. first night I'm in town. I fucking spec for this shit. It went pretty well. Um, so you're going you to pick, you're gonna pick your this. speaker. Uh, there's going to be three rounds that oh. you'll get a chance to make an argument and then make a persuade roll. Um, and then one of you can choose to aid in some way if you see the opportunity arise. But be warned, the things that you say and the approaches that you make could affect the positive and negative modifiers sure. that are applied Let's to your let argument. Let's be our speaker. I mean, really. I that's think it makes sense. Want. Oh, Driscoll will be the speaker for the opposition. <laughs> Don't course. you worry. Um, Don't worry. All right. I think you have the highest... I, yeah, because I've got snake oil sales. Do you, can you do persuade stuff? I mean, you yeah. should probably... You should probably... I, I mean, I don't know if... stuff? <laughs> okay. I've got some good persuade stats. Mm-hmm. I think you have the best. So, okay, I think I'm probably our speaker. Mm -hmm. Teamwork. Oh! oh. oh. No. 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 What is that do again? Get crowded close. So, Mr. Fancy. We all stand around yeah. Doug for a moment. He goes, <laughs> and go. <Yeah. laughs> Me and any adjacent allies add plus four to their next trait rolls, and they must be adjacent. 
Okay. So um, the three of you will add plus four to your next trait roll. So your first persuade roll, roll will get that. And if you guys choose to make any rolls to aid him. So uh, I will get a plus eight on my first persuade roll. Correct. Holy shit balls. That's a lot. Now, uh, Preacher Pryor, what is it specifically that you and your associates are here to as, say? As he says that, the sun setting just <laughs> glints on my, on my star and a little bit on my gun. And I just look... Slightly more impressive. Golden hour. Yeah, golden hour. I look, I look plus two charisma. There's a lot of that going <laughs> around right now. Just somehow, somehow, just there's just a there's just a, a power emanating from me. Please continue, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harris. As I'm sure you're oh, very yeah, aware, <laughs> something that could certainly bring a new and booming town low is something of an epidemic that popped up, and I do not think that is in any of our interests to have an epidemic in Coldwater Creek. Now those who have been working in your mind have been afflicted with something that seems as simple as a flu and then can lead to their death. And I do not think it is in either of our interests to let that continue to be a trend amongst your workers. Make your roll. Persuade roll. Persuade! So you're trying to get more, more successes in three rounds than the opposition does. Ooh, All right, yeah. so that ace. That's an eight plus, plus eight, eight. <laughs> <laughs> which is a 16. So that's a success with a raise, with a raise, with a raise. That's four successes. Four successes. I'm successful. You are successful. Um, Driscoll kind of sits up in, in his seat and says, uh, now, Mr. Harris, you should be aware. Um, the preacher here has uh, been... Though his, though his motives may seem pure, he's been dealing with uh, quite an unsavory sort of people in town and has himself been connected to uh, several unsavory elements in town as well. So while he claims to have the town's interest at heart, it uh, should be noted that he uh, might have ulterior motivations for this, and I would recommend that you keep that in mind and be thinking about what it is he stands to gain from uh, you taking his advice into consideration. Um, so wait, how does this work? Like you roll now? He's gonna roll and okay. see how many successes. You, you guys what? are basically both trying to sway Harris. Okay, and how does but it work? But Driscoll gets a plus two because Harris how, doesn't like you guys. How do we help sure. him though? Can, can like I say something? If something occurs okay. to you, a skill that you want to try and use to aid uh, him, okay. any success you get will add a plus one to his next roll. Sure. Okay. So Driscoll is trying to persuade uh, Harris. Oh my god. So that aced. Oh, come on. That aced again. So that's a 12, 18. What? <laughs> a 20 plus 2, which is a 22. So that is. Um, bullshit. Fucking you four with successes. Your dice. Uh, that's five successes. Roll that dice. Roll that dice right now. Five successes. Roll it right now. You rolled a Damn. one. Damn! And you rolled a one. Son of a... What? How? I keep telling you guys, it's my GM hands. <laughs> They're magic. Stop. Cut them off! And uh, Harris says, uh, yes, yes, that is an interesting point. I have heard that you and your uh, friends here have been involved in no matter, uh, no small amount of unpleasant activities here in Coldwater Creek. Uh, is that really your motivation? You have the town's welfare at heart. Harris. Now, before you respond, okay. does anyone else want to try yeah. and uh, aid him in some way? Yes. Yes. All right. Which one of you wants to? Well, to who's going to do it? Um, and how? I can talk. I can talk to the welfare. I uh, well, I I was going to talk about basically how to help people who are no flip flip a coin or or decide. Uh, how you I how you guys want to do it? Trying to talk about the same thing. Probably, yeah. But you, I mean, you have a better. What is it? That I don't have a persuade, I, but I do have a plus four to whatever I try to do. Right. I my charisma modifies my persuade, right? Very much so. So I would yes. have a plus six. But do you only have a plus four this? Yeah. Or, next action. But you don't have to use action. persuade. You can yeah. use intimidate. So you can I, use yeah. taunt. Was, you can use anything yeah. like knowledge if you want, oh. if it's pertinent. I was, I was, I was a trying to intimidate. Decide in three, okay, I'll, I'll two, I'll okay. Well, now I have to figure out where the hell we are. Uh, so you, he, Driscoll just said basically that he... Don't trust their motivations. They, they've been up to a lot around, of unsavory stuff. Maybe right. they're up to more than, than it seems. 
Well, any person who wants to help a town has to be involved with some of the lower folk or else they can't help them. They're people just as much as anyone else and any good preacher who's worth his salt would be involved with those folk to try and help them and bring them back to the light now, wouldn't they? All right, so you're making a persuade roll? Yeah. Make your roll. And every success and raise that you get will add a plus one to Gabe's next roll. Yay! It's an ace. Okay. So a seven, so that's seven, a success. Eight, nine, ten, oh, right. eleven, twelve. Wait, because I get the Oh, you get the plus 13. four. Oh, right. Yeah. So oh, crap. Thirteen. Okay, so that's a success with two raises, so you get a plus three on your yes. next roll. All right, so how would you like to respond, Gabriel? <laughs> Harris, you're a businessman, and you're a self-made man, as far as I know it. So I would ask you, as a businessman, do you normally worry about what other people wish to gain or what you could possibly lose? And I think you have a great deal to lose if those who work under you start dying. All right, make your persuade roll. All right. So you don't get the plus four anymore, but you do get your no, plus three from her. No, but I get her. plus three, and so that's then a I plus get seven my together? plus four. Yeah. Plus seven. Uh, so that's four plus... Four, or no, seven. four plus seven. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, oh. I'm going to add a d6 to that. You're going to spend that white chip like a blue chip? You know what I am! How fancy. And you also get to add a plus two to it. Oh my God. Because you spent a fate chip. <laughs> yes, I do. So, okay, that was. Uh, Keep all that in mind. You were at that 11. was an 11. Oh, <laughs> you aced with that. Oh! <laughs> oh! Okay, so I add That's a 21 <laughs> plus plus 2. Plus 2, so 23. 23. 23. Okay. Got me a solid 23. Eat that, Driscoll! I think that's another five successes. Driscoll, you fuck. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that that's it. I, I shoot a glare at Driscoll that expresses the word Driscoll, you fuck. <laughs> he gets it. He gets it. That's a phrase, not a word. Say so he knows. Now, that is all well and good, Mr. Harris, but um, I, I don't want to gloss over too much how uh, Preacher Pryor led with, uh, as a businessman, it's more important to not worry about what other people might want and to focus on what you might stand to lose. Now, that's not how you uh, rose to prominence here in the town of Coldwater Creek by being single-minded single and... and Tunnel vision. That's that's not the man of vision that you are, and you don't want to uh, lose sight of what else might be going on here, do you? Oh, oh my Six. God! Son of a fucking bitch. Five. On. Uh, it's eleven. Five. It's an eleven. Wait, wait. Why'd you? I just rolled a six. What are you doing? With your stupid I think, guy. I think it's loaded. That's what's happening. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll keep my eleven. That's a success. Uh, what's it? 13, actually, because he gets a plus two. So that's a success with two races. The total is nine to eight right now, going into the final Wait. round of the social conflict. Are you are by one. Um, well, I've got a lot. I've got two fate chips left. James Bogue, <laughs> is there anything you would like to add <clears throat> to this? Uh, I've mostly been leaning against the wall, as I often do hands in my pocket, I kick off against the wall um, and, uh, and kind of get right into Driscoll's face. I'm like, how dare you, sir? How dare you talk about the welfare when w what we have been doing is protecting this town? Now, I don't wear this star for nothing. This star is here to protect the town. And what I'm seeing here with this business with the ghost rock is, is something that I find deeply unsettling. So I'm going to roll intimidation. Intimidation. Yes. Okay. Good cut, bad cop, these guys. Make, <laughs> an, make an intimidate roll. I get a plus two. Uh, you get a plus, get six. plus six. Oh, yeah, plus six. Still get your. All right. Uh, it's a ten. Ten. That's a success with a race. So that's going to add a plus two to Gabriel's next uh, persuade roll. Now, I, now, I, now, settle down, Mr. I step Bogue. up and put my hand on his shoulder, and I'm like, now my friend here gets very passionate about things. I can see that. I, I tend to be a little more level-headed. So don't, don't let him scare you, but we care very much about this town. Damn it, I just suddenly lost the point that <laughs> uh, 
Zach just made it's, last time. Uh, he he to... said, uh, "Don't get distracted by by these words. Basically, like oh. fo focus in on what their real motivation might be." Now look, he Harris, you have come upon this as though we are enemies. But I think that the good of this town is in both of our interests. And if people can't trust that they are safe working in your minds, they will leave and they will stop. People care about making money, but they care about their lives too. And I'm a very influential man in town, and I think that perhaps both of us being on the same page could be very beneficial for both of us. Now there's no reason that what I want has to be against what would benefit you. Give yourself an extra plus two for that argument. Okay. So that's a plus And what do I get eight from him? Altogether, a plus two from plus him. Plus two. Yeah. Plus two. Plus eight. Got. Uh, so that's a five plus eight, so that's a 13. So that's a success with two raises. But you know what? I also am going to toss a uh, blue fate chip oh, okay. into that because fuck it. Sure. Fuck you, Zachary Driscoll. Right? Zachary Driscoll. You piece of shit. <laughs> so that's uh, plus five. Yeah, plus five. Yeah. Oh, right, because you have Elan. Uh, so an 18. So that's four successes. Jesus. Don't roll a bunch of sixes. Yeah. Yeah, just don't, don't, don't do that. Come on. Stop it. Stop it with your sixes. <laughs> Now the, Hit it again. This is like the one thing I'm good at. Preacher, that's 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 true. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily... We don't have to be enemies. And, and Mr. Bogue, I'm sorry if I rubbed you the wrong way before. I don't mean to be the source of your ire. But um, it strikes me as a bit strange that the preacher would suddenly be so interested in the welfare of your business, Mr. Harris, since... From all the reports and accounts I've heard, it's uh, him and his friends who were responsible for driving off the railroad groups that were here uh, to meet with you about expanding that business. Now, does that sound like the kind of people that you want to associate with, the kind of people that are going to drive away potential lucrative deals uh, to settle some sort of personal vendetta or, or slight they suffered uh, out in the streets of town? Someone who can so easily be manipulated by others? That doesn't sound like someone you want to be dealing with. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> six. Oh my God. It's a five. All right, a six and a five. That's pretty reasonable. It's an 11 plus two. That's it's like the 13. The worst you can do is a 13. <laughs> um, no. You gonna fate chip it? I'm gonna fate, I'm gonna re-roll it. All right. I might be able to do better. I got all these fate chips. He rolls sixes pretty consistently, so. You have yeah. sixes. got to be fucking kidding me. A four. Okay, that's not as good. Oh no, his ascot. <laughs> I don't believe him anymore. His ascot beat. He doesn't seem as, he doesn't seem Guys, as important. Get that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to see that. I'm going to re-roll that. I'm going to re-roll oh. that. it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank well, God. I'm spend, you know, I got one more fate chip. No, it's weird. You don't always point. roll sixes. Just gonna, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? I know. Not every time. I just want everyone to know these are not loaded dice. They're loaded. They're not. He just switched it right there. Oh, wow. man. I'll spend one, they piece, roll of, sixes and one three. piece of cursed Spanish. Oh. Just the one. Just the one. Just to make you guys sweat. Okay. Thank God. He got three successes. So I'm going to tally up the, the final score here. Hmm. We, we know. Hmm. We, we can do basic math. What's the final score? <laughs> I don't remember the numbers. Well, so. I was ahead by one, mm -hmm. yeah. and he got three, and I got five. No, you got four. I got so, four? Yeah. Then I'm ahead by two. You are ahead by two. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Yeah. Harris Mr. Harris spends a moment <laughs> just kind of... <laughs> the preacher's doing this. <laughs> yeah. He, he watches maybe, you do maybe, your no, touchdown no. dance. I'm maybe sorry. Not, uh, maybe not here. I got caught up in my own charisma. His... <laughs> His ways are unusual. Um, okay, the Lord so, has spoken but to I him. like it. You, um, you beat Driscoll, but not by a wide margin. Sure. So what that means is uh, Harris is going to provide the minimum amount of support possible to your claim. Now, uh, Mr. Driscoll, I appreciate you keeping an eye out for yours and my interests here in town, but I think the preacher has an interesting point. There's no reason that we can't be friends. James, make a notice roll for me. Yes, sir. And I think that uh, perhaps, what Seven. did you roll? Seven? 
You notice that there's a painting that is askew behind uh, Harris on the wall. Not very, not very majorly askew, but just slightly askew. And you feel an overwhelming need to go and correct uh, and center that painting. I see uh, no reason why we shouldn't work together. Like, you're getting up and going to go do it. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your friend, uh, Mr. Bogue? What are you doing? I, just, I just, just it doesn't seem... Hold on, this doesn't seem right. Um, it just, occurs to you that it's very important to you to help people in their in in their times of need. It's it's important for everyone in this community to help each other, and that's all you're trying to do. James, <laughs> we we gotta James. help. We gotta help each other. This is this is the only way we can make this work here. Yeah, James will. I think I made that clear earlier. Be that as it may, um, now you're noticing that uh, there's a pile of untidy paper on his desk. Um, and it, it really looks a bit disorganized. You could probably right. straighten that up. Excuse me. Uh, James, what are you? Those are sensitive he's, documents, he's not, sir. Just trying to be helpful. He I likes don't know to be if helpful. this is some sort of negotiation tactic, but I, I think, think we are okay. Uh, please, please stop touching those things, Mr. Bogue. I'm just please return sure to your they seat. Are, they are all. Uh, I wasn't sitting down. Before James, I why don't you sit down? Standing. Well, James. please take a seat, Mr. Bogue. Just making sure these are good. Please release the documents. Do I need to call my security force? No, that won't no. be necessary. Uh, Mr. Harris, I'm sure he is just... Make a persuade roll for me at a minus four. Oh, my God. What exactly are you trying to do oh here? Oh, my God. Well, that's two. Plus. But... Pew! Last feed chip. Last feed chip of the night. Last one. Well, it's at a minus four, but I also get a plus four, so. Well, right, so it's at, now it's at a plus two because yeah, of your alarm. Right. You spent a fate ship. So one and oh, a three, three four, five. Five? Mm-hmm. All right, what do you say to smooth this situation over? What intonation is going on with Mr. Bogue? I'm sorry. Mr. Bogue sometimes gets caught up in the community spirit. He is something of a, a clean freak, I believe we could call it. I see. I, I, I do not think you need to read too much into anything he is doing. He is simply trying to show goodwill. Quiet. Well, as I was saying before Mr. Bogue interrupted this business meeting I was hoping we were having, yeah. I, James, I see no reason why we should be at odds, preacher. For the time being, our, uh, our Ideas may as well align. So uh, I will hear out what it is you propose that we could do to uh, smooth over this situation of the miners getting sick. Perhaps we could pencil in an appointment tomorrow for you well, to sit down with uh, Mr. Driscoll and lay out uh, a few ideas. I don't know if we really need to come back. It seems if you just let your miners have a break every four hours or so to get some fresh air that it might circumvent the problem. You believe that will help? Apparently so, yes. The Ghost Rock experts we have consulted with seem to believe that that is the case. I see. Well, that would have been useful information before this point, don't you think? Well, you insisted on making sure that we weren't out to get you somehow. Well, I had heard very unsavory things. I think that well, could be... Uh, it's understandable, Mr. Harris. Perhaps you shouldn't believe everything you hear about us right off the bat. Perhaps not. Uh, I can speak with my foreman and see if we can set up breaks like that. I will be monitoring it to see if there is any change in the level of miners becoming sick. And if it is, I will be sure to uh, keep your advice in mind. It well, only it only does better for your business to treat your miners well. I completely agree, Miss Byrne. If there's, I have to assume you don't want the miners to explode. <laughs> Do you say that? <laughs> yeah. But I don't laugh. Uh, <laughs> yes. I would prefer m my employees remain intact. Then we all have one mind. Well, thank you. If there's nothing else. It was lovely to meet you. She puts her hand out to him. Uh, he don't m much like to shake hands, miss. Not at all. Uh, perhaps, Zachary, we could make an exception for Miss Byrne. Uh, enchanted, I'm sure, to have met you, Miss Byrne. And I anticipate uh, many more successful dealings with you in the future. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have many things to go over. Curse? Don't forget, it's good to help other people. 
James, James, James you've made so that it quite is, clear. Mr. Bogue, thank, thank you. for your time, Mr. Harris Driscoll. All should right. we go? I believe we should. So you guys leave. Um, and you're walking outside, and, and in the interest of time, before you start talking to James about what it was that just happened in there, you hear a woman screaming from across the street. Not screaming so much as shouting. Uh, she seems panicked, and, and you look over and you see... Uh, a woman that has a, a child in, in her arms that she's kind of shaking and she says, wake up now, wake up. Come on, don't, you're scaring me. Don't, don't do this. Wake up, Presley, wake up. We and you see, see that, uh, no! you do across the street. You see that uh, Presley is just kind of like uh, flopping with his eyes closed in her arms and, and she's looking around and saying, help, help, oh. help me, he won't wake up. He won't wake up. Rosalie don't run Presley. Right there. And that's where we'll end. Oh. <laughs> Presley! So thank you guys very much for uh, for that. That was a very close uh, social conflict. I did not think that those dice. Were, I didn't think you've been versus your plus eights that I would have much that six. I could do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a six. And a three. Three. Right? Well, Normal dice three. stuff. Three. 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 Two, You'll three. find with only six numbers on the die, sometimes they repeat. We can keep doing this while we do that. Yeah, but no, six. It's six. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We did a three and a three. That's six. Then a oh. two, oh. then a four. Oh that's God. six. Oh oh then a six. <laughs> Conspiracies mount. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for, I'm going to grab that. Thank you guys for joining us so much tonight here on Friday Night yeah. for Wild yeah. Cards. Uh, and thank you for all of the, the tips and the things that you yes. unlocked. Yes, thank, thank you very much for the tips. I don't think we quite got to a little high strangeness, so we didn't mm. we didn't hit that tonight. But there's still uh, a few things that are <laughs> that wasn't high strangeness that are okay. developing. That wasn't that wasn't the high strangeness that All I right. had in mind. It was still a little bit strange. Uh, but thank you guys that's for tuning in. That's thank a whole for other deal that seems to be happening. <laughs> and um, I will say, um, you can find if you like the audio that you just heard uh, throughout the game that you can find at Plate Mail Games, uh, platemailgames.com. Or you can look up Plate Mail Games, three different words on Drive Through RPG. That's Wes Otis's audio company. He's created a wide variety of tracks. They're loopable 10 minute audio tracks that you can use for any genre, any number of different settings. He has an exhaustive amount. Uh, so you can find those on Drive Through RPG, most of them for 50 cents to a dollar, uh, depending on if he's running any sales at the time. So check those out for your home game. They're a lot of fun. Exclamation point PMG in the chat will bring yeah, you. They like three they did awesome. No. Perfect. Uh, and then also, uh, you can follow any one of the Wild Cards cast at their Twitter handles. We do Twitter RP in between uh, sessions of the game, so you can find me at wildcards underscore GM, at wildcards underscore TG for Tortlaw, at wildcards underscore Meg M E G for Rosaline, mm -hmm. at wildcards underscore JP for Gabriel Pryor, and at wildcards underscore dom for James Bogue. Uh, you can check that out during the week when we fill in a little bit of the blanks and uh, have some fun yeah. role-playing interactions in between sessions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Jordan tends to post the, the conversations as moments on his account. So if you want some more clarification on sort of what's going on with uh, Gabe specifically with this stuff, we've been dealing with some of that in the Twitter. Series. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff to be gained and just extra character bits that happen. Yeah. So definitely check that out if you enjoy what you've seen on the show and you want to spend some more time with the characters. Um, also, if you have any questions about Savage World, Deadlands, anything like that, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Jordan Callerman, C A L L A R M A N, and I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Uh, does anyone have anything they want to talk about before we go, Talene? No. No. All good. All good. It's all good. Megan? Um, well, our the, the podcast that Jordan and I do with Garav um, is the second episode is up on the Saving Throw Show Patreon. Um, so if you are a $10 backer or up, you have access to that right now. For everyone else, it will be coming out next week. Um, and you can follow us on Twitter at EXP Pointers Pod. I believe that's right. Super easy to say. Super easy. Yeah. Jordan? Uh, so, um, you can follow me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. I tweet about things. A lot of it's just promotion of, of like games we play in here, but I'm trying to tweet more about other things. Um, also, check out the podcast I'm a part of called This American Lie. Um, I think we have a new episode coming out soon. We try and put one out each month, and it is an improvised parody of This American Life, and it's funny. And I like being a part of it. Also, if you're in the Los Angeles area, my group, The Money Pit, performs at the Nerdist School stage on Sunset um, once a month 
on the third Saturday of the month at 8 o'clock, which is tomorrow if you are in Ooh. Los Angeles area. We are Pay What You Will this month, which is a special thing Ooh. that we're doing. So if you're in Los Angeles area and feel like coming by, there'll be funny stuff. And you can pay what you will. Whoa, pay whatever you will. You're Don't. welcome. Uh, just a couple things real quick. Uh, first of all, if you enjoyed this show or any of our shows and you haven't subscribed, just this is uh, a half off of your first month's subscription. If you haven't subscribed to us before, you can get half off uh, of your first month's subscription. So please uh, feel free. If you're an Amazon Prime member too, you also just get a subscription for free with your account. So um, Isn't that cool? It's yeah, it's very cool. cool. So you could either get half off or you can uh, do it with Amazon Prime. The other thing I'll say is Sunday we are premiering a brand new show called Tempting Fate. Mm. Uh, that is uh, Rick Budd and Nick Gilman, uh, writers from Vast and Shield of Tomorrow on Geek and Sundry, uh, are heading up a, uh, as Amy Dallin would say, a smorgasbord of friendship with, uh, led by Amy Dallin. Uh, other actors or cast members, people in there are uh, uh, Gina DeVivo, uh, Aliza Pearl, Heather Wood, uh, and lots of uh, guest stars will be coming in um, throughout the season. So definitely tune in for that. That's 5 o'clock uh, this Sunday. And that's specific time. time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Two more oh. quick things before we go. Oh wait, wait, wait Jordan wait. has one. One, one thing that yeah. I, I totally forgot to mention. Uh, if, if you guys watch during the Alzheimer's Marathon, one of the things that we mm. unlocked was mm. a very special, extremely annoying NPC special one-off game, uh, which will be happening Monday, where I will be playing Meepo, and- I'll be playing Burgermeister, Meister Burger. I'll be playing Trumpy. Yeah, and uh, I think the fourth person is Havana Mahoney playing- uh, Delilah. A, a Delilah from their uh, Iron Keep one-off at the camp thing. And there will also be guest appearances by mm -hmm. other people like Tyler Rhodes and Amy Vorpal. And Gaurav Gulati will be running that game. So it's going be to be great. We all have crazy costumes and it's going to be completely insane. And please tune in 8 o'clock on Monday to watch that game. Uh, yeah, and then also two more really quick things. Um, Archie? Uh, Doc James V and Barnabas S.B. Cairn are all Patreon NPCs. Our backers at uh, the $25 level or above all create NPCs that they send to me and then I incorporate them into the Wild Cards game. They've all been a lot of fun. There's been other NPCs we've introduced over the time. Um, so if you're interested in doing some of that, you can definitely look us up on Patreon at Saving Throw. Uh, look up the Saving Throw Patreon and if you back at $25 or more, you can add an NPC to the Wild Cards game. There's other fun perks that we're adding all the time. Also, uh, Pinnacle, the guys who make the Savage World game in the Deadlands Reloaded setting, are doing a Kickstarter right now for their Doomtown Reloaded, uh, I believe it's called an expandable card game, because living card game is trademark Fantasy Flight. Uh, but it is a uh, expansion for their Deadlands-themed uh, expandable card game. Uh, and there's a lot of stretch goals that have been unlocked. You can get a lot of fun Deadlands stuff. You can get the base set of the game. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. So check that out. Look, out the, look up the Doomtown Reloaded uh, There Comes a Reckoning Kickstarter. Seems cool. Uh, there's some yeah. fun stuff on there, so yeah. check that out. They're a great company. They make really cool products. Uh, thank you to Brian for running yes, the con thank for you. us. Thank you to all of you guys for hanging out and watching. We hope you had a good time. It's what we do this for, uh, and we'll see you next Friday for the next episode of Wild Cards, but until then, we will leave you with some finger guns. Oh, no, actual guns. Come on! Oh, guns. 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 Guns.